Um, all right. All right. I think we're live. All right. Well, we are here today to celebrate the DC Veg Fest. This is our first ever virtual DC Veg Fest. So I want to welcome everyone here. And uh, my name is Erica Meyer. I'm the Executive Director of Compassion Over Killing. And I'm Jessica Carlson, the Director of Operations here. And we're here today doing a virtual event because, as you know, or as most of you have heard by now, that the DC Veg Fest was scheduled to take place today in Yard Park had to be canceled because of a state of emergency that was declared by the mayor's office earlier this week in response to Hurricane Florence. So the event was canceled. We went through all the processes needed to cancel the event. And we decided with uh, the limited time we had, we decided to turn this into a virtual celebration because even though the event was canceled, we still wanted the celebration to go on. So we're gonna give you a little bit of uh, detail what's gonna happen today throughout the, um, the virtual event to let you know. And then uh, then we're gonna get started with the actual music stretch back. So we've got three cooking demos we're gonna be bringing to you today. Uh, one is virtual, two, Live. We are recording in the COK office in Tacoma Park, Maryland. So this is sort of a live in studio experience. This is the first time we're doing this long yeah. of an event from our office. So do you want to talk a little bit about the cooking demos today? Yeah, yeah. This is really super exciting that we have. Um, we're going to be having um, Danny McGee. She's getting set up, and um, a lot of you have probably followed her online. We also have our very own Jessica Carter, so we're super excited to have her. Um, and also Elizabeth uh, Alfano. So um, you definitely want to be stay tuned to be checking all three of them out today. And in addition to that, we'll be doing additional recipe videos that we'll be sharing on our tryveg.com site featuring some of the sponsors and other vendors and their food products so that we have an opportunity to bring them to you. And we're also gonna be bringing several speakers to you today. Um, I think most of our speakers are virtual. So we have mm -hmm. Carol Adams and Ginny Messina are gonna be joining us virtually for an interview. We have Chef Bev Kumari, and she was scheduled to do a cooking demo on site at the DC Veg Fest, but unfortunately, um, because that's not happening, she's gonna join us for an interview. And we also have uh, Mike Wolf, who is Compassion Over Killing's uh, Director of Investigations. He'll be joining us virtually. Eric Lindstrom will be joining us virtually. He's also with Compassion Over Killing, our Director of Marketing. And we have some other speakers coming in and out throughout the day. Some sponsors are coming in, busboys and poets might stop by, um, but we have a lot going on. And so one of the goals of this event is to still bring the celebration to you, but because the, the, because the event had to be canceled, this has been a really challenging situation for us. This is the first time in our 10 year history of organizing this event that it had to be canceled. We posted this event outside starting in 2009, and it has rained on a few of those occasions. Many of you may have remembered that, but we still hosted the event. And unfortunately, because of the state of emergency, there was a need to cancel this year's event. Uh, and we know that there are a lot of hardships on uh, people who were involved in it. So we wanna thank everyone for their understanding and their patience. There, you know, there's, there's so much that goes into organizing this event. There's so much love and time and energy not just from COK staff and volunteers and interns, but we know that our sponsors and all of our vendors and our speakers put a lot of energy putting their part of the event together to make it the celebration that it is. And about 20 to 25,000 people have been coming out to celebrate this event. And so we want to thank everyone uh, who you know was involved so much in putting all the energy needed out there to organize this event and we appreciate your patience and understanding that this year unfortunately the event had to be canceled so we are working closely with sponsors and vendors to still bring them to you in different ways whether it's today's event throughout social media showcasing who they are and what they do some recipe videos that we'll be sharing with some of our vendors and sponsors and we're also uh, one of the things that we're doing this year too is we have tote bags. We have all these tote bags that we give away at the event for free. And so this year, we still have a lot of those tote bags. Some of them have been given away to volunteers, and many people reserve them in advance, and those are still available. But the rest of those tote bags that we give away at the beginning of the event, we are going to be giving them away throughout um, the next couple of weeks at different uh, spaces, different events in the DC area. So a lot of the vendors who are normally involved on site at the event we will be bringing tote bags to them or some of them might be picking them up. Mm -hmm. And so for the next couple of weeks, you need to stay tuned to our Facebook page to find out where you can get one of our free tote bags. And I think today we're starting, I don't know the time, so you have to, 
stay tuned for that. But we are going to be giving away some of those tote bags at Busboys and Poets in Tacoma, which luckily for us, uh, is right next door to our office, right. so <laughs> we get to enjoy it all the time. Yeah, and we have been getting a lot of inquiries, so we know that the, the everyone in the public is really loving these tote bags, and they yeah. have high oh. demand. So, and here is a yeah. sample of one of those tote bags, and it's loaded with stuff from our supporters, sponsors, vendors. So these are what we'll be giving away throughout the community for the next several weeks at different um, events and vendors. In the area yeah and we've had a chance to look through them and there's a lot of great products in there so you don't want to miss out on that yes and we'll be telling you about some of those products later on throughout the broadcast but also we're giving away other stuff today yeah um, some other fun giveaways um, we are going to announce the winner of our air fryer so you definitely want to stay tuned for that but then also throughout our fun event today um, you will have opportunities to be winning our uh, one of our very own DC Veg Fest T-shirts, we want to make sure that people will have the opportunity to still wear these with pride throughout the D.C. area um, as we continue to plan for next year after this. And then also our own COK shirts as well. So please stay tuned. These are great uh, apparel to be wearing and supporting uh, your love for us here at Compassion Over Killing and the D.C. Veg Fest. Yeah, so one quick uh, additional shout out to sponsors. As you can see behind us, this is the banner that would normally go on our main stage. And we always like to give shout outs to all of our top level sponsors. So as you can see on here, Vegan Treats is one of our top level sponsors. And unfortunately, because of the event, you can find their treats around the area. I know you've all down the street from us here, yeah. sells their desserts, and we'll hopefully be working on getting more of their desserts distributed throughout the area. But A Well-Fed World is one of our favorite organizations that has always been a top sponsor of the DC Veg Fest. And of course, Dr. Bronner's, which many of you know you'll get in your tote bags if you get one of their sample products. They are an amazing and incredibly supportive company that has um, donated a lot of products for different events, as well as been a huge financial supporter of the work that we do. So yeah. an extra shout out to them, and we'll be talking more about them throughout the day as well. But I think we have, I think that's that's a good start to let you know what's going to happen throughout the day. So again, welcome everyone to the DC Veg Fest, the virtual version. Yeah. And this is our 10th year, the first time ever going virtual. And um, I think we're going to get started. We're going to be moving it over to Danny McGee from Damn Good Vegan is going to be doing a cooking demo with you right now. So thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for joining in. Three, two, one. All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning into the virtual DC Veg Fest today. We have a lot of amazing events planned to share with you. The first of being a cooking demo with Danny McGee of Damn Good Vegan. She cooks some seriously damn good vegan guys. <laughs> and she's going to show us how to make a jackfruit chili today. So, Danny, take it away. All right. Thank you. I'm so excited. This recipe, I have like 20 minutes, and this recipe can literally be done in 20 minutes once you have everything chopped up. So, we already have our pan heated up, and I've added a little bit of vegetable broth. You can make this with oil, but we're definitely going oil, oil free today. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put in some minced garlic and then I'm gonna turn up this heat a little bit. And then I'm gonna also add in the chopped um, onions. So we have garlic and onion going in. We want these to start cooking down. Just gonna add that in here. And then while that is cooking, I'll show you all the other ingredients that we have. All right, so we're just going to mix that around. I'll pop the top back on, and we have the flame all the way up. So what else is going in this chili? We have bell peppers. We have uh, red and green. We have black beans, and you can choose any bean that you like if you're not a fan of black beans. Lentils are also really good in this, or chickpeas, so that is definitely up to you. We have a veggie broth. And we have some diced crushed tomatoes. And then I have an array of spices. And this is where the chili really takes life. You want to make sure you're filling your chili with lots and lots of spices because then it'll just feel so wholesome. And so we have uh, chili powder, of course. I have uh, eight tablespoons of that. I have four tablespoons of cumin. I have four teaspoons of paprika, two teaspoons of garlic, and two teaspoons of onion. And I have also chopped up some fresh onion, uh, fresh garlic because I just love garlic, but it's up to you if you wanna do a lot of garlic or not. Um, just make this recipe 
your own. And then I have some crushed red pepper flakes that will, I will add at the end for those that might want it spicy. But I'm going to make the recipe mild, and then you can add as much spice as you like. Cayenne is also a great powder to add to this to make it really, really spicy and flavorful. And then the star of the show is jackfruit. So we are using a jackfruit company's Tex-Mex flavored jackfruit. And that's going to go right into the chili. It's going to add some body to the chili. And it's our meat replacement. So it's just going to make this chili feel really hearty. And outside of these vegetables that I've chosen, feel free to add any vegetables that you like in your chili. If it be corn or broccoli or celery, any other things you want to add in there, feel free. All right, let's see what we have going on. All right, I got a little facial right there with all that steam. But it is smelling good in here already. So now that our onions are now translucent, next thing I want to do is add in the spices. I love to cook my spices first before adding in all the other ingredients because I believe that, especially with dry herbs, it definitely brings them back to life when they are uh, cooking in the pan with your onions and garlic. So I'm just going to go ahead and add in all of these spices. So that is uh, eight tablespoons of uh, chili powder, four tablespoons of cumin, four teaspoons of paprika, two teaspoons of garlic, and two teaspoons of onion. Now this recipe, we've actually doubled it. But um, so when you get the recipe, you can just make it according to the recipe and that'll be enough for uh, a family of four or for, you know, you to have leftovers. But since we got a lot of people here today, we are doubling up on the recipe and we're just going to let all of those spices kind of work together, get heated up and absorb any of the liquid that was in the pot. All right, perfect. So now I'm going to add in um, my green peppers and red peppers and get those cooking. Stir that around a little bit. It's already smelling fantastic. All right, and then we're going to now add in our tomatoes. So we have crushed tomatoes here. And uh, depending upon how you like your chili, you can just use diced tomatoes. That'll make it you know, you'll have chunks of tomatoes in there, or you can do half tomatoes or half crushed tomatoes, half diced tomatoes, if you like uh, the chunky tomato texture. But here we're just doing crushed tomatoes. That's going to make our chili nice and smooth. And then we are allowing the other vegetables to just stand out and add some heartiness to this meal. All right, so now I'm just mixing all of this together. As you can see, hopefully you all can see really well, but it's nice and chunky and thick. And we're going to add in some veggie broth. All right, I'm not going to add all of that. And stirring all that together, now we can add in our black beans because these are already cooked. And with your bean choice, you can do canned beans if you're in a rush. If you have some time, you can make fresh beans. Just soak your beans overnight, and then the next day, pop them um, in the crock pot or on the stove and let them cook for a couple hours, and then you have fresh beans. And like I said, you can choose any bean that you like, but we are using black beans today. So now we basically already have our chili put together. We just want it to um start to come to a boil and i'm going to prepare the jackfruit in the meantime all right so i have two packs of jackfruit that i'm going to add and before even opening the pack what i like to do is kind of crush the pieces because i don't want large chunks in this chili i want it to be spread out so i've crushed that one and i'm going to break this one up you can also take a knife to it and just chop them up as small as you want, but this is going to be perfect. And then conveniently, it has these tabs on the side that you just tear open like that. And let me go ahead and do this one as well, and then we will add this to the, to the chili. 
All right, yep, so our chili is already bubbling up. I'm gonna turn it down just a bit so I don't get splashed with chili. All right, stir that up, smelling amazing. And we just dump the, the jackfruit right in. And the amazing part about this jackfruit is it's already flavored. It's got that Tex-Mex flavor, which is perfect for chili. And because um, I don't know if you know, but chili is definitely a Mex is from Mexican cuisine. So that's why we're using the cumin and the paprika because it's giving you that uh, nice Mexican flavor. All right, so get all that jackfruit in. And Jackfruit Company also has other flavors too. They have teriyaki, they have barbecue. If you're looking for like a pulled barbecue sandwich, that is awesome. Alternatives. But look at that. That looks so good. And I think I am going to add a little bit more veggie broth to get the consistency I would like. All right, let me turn that back up just a bit. All right, there we go. So now I am putting the lid on, and as you might have noticed, I didn't add any salt to this. You can add salt if you like, but there is some sodium that's in the jackfruit, so that's gonna add to the whole dish. But if you feel like you would like some salt, feel free to add to taste. All right. And we're going to let that just boil for a little bit. And then when we're done, we're going to be topping our chili with some vegan shreds, some vegan gourmet shreds, um, cheddar by Follow Your Heart. So that's just going to top it off really good. And then if you wanted to, you could also do a vegan cream, um, sour cream or even do avocado right on top. That is one of my favorite ways to have chili, just put you know chopped avocado right on top. Yeah, and then for those that want it spicy, we'll add a little bit of red pepper flakes. So it's Jessica, I'm back, and I wanted to ask Danny a few questions. Yes. First of all, this chili looks and smells amazing. Thank all. you. Everybody who's here, mouth is watering. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask, where can people learn how to cook like you? Well, um, I mean, I share on my Instagram and my Facebook exactly what it is that I do. I've been cooking for most of my life. And once I went vegan, I just decided, you know, I'm going to uh, veganize everything that I used to like. So I share a lot of those recipes on my Facebook page, on my Instagram, and on my website at Damn Good Vegan. That's D A M Good Vegan dot com or Instagram is Damn Good Vegan. So um, yeah, you can check me out there. Wonderful. Um, do you offer cooking classes in the D.C. area? I do, actually. Um, I do cooking classes at different areas, but I have a cooking class going on right now at the Water Hole in Mount Rainier. And my next class is actually tomorrow, and we're going to be making this exact same dish. So if you're here locally in the D.C. area, please come out. And it's from 2 to 5 p.m. tomorrow. And the great thing about it is for everybody that registers for the class, you get a D.C. Veg Fest tote bag with Ooh. all those goodies inside. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah, so, you know, this is the class to come to for yeah. sure because we're going to be doing that. I'm going to be bringing uh, cornbread, vegan cornbread, and then you get a tote bag with all those goodies in there. So definitely come out for those classes. So this recipe came together super simply and super quickly, but it's filled with lots of flavor like I can smell it. So what's your approach to like infusing flavor but not taking up a whole bunch of time? Yeah, well, it's all about the spices. Mm. So... You know, you can literally take any vegetable and if you spice it right, yeah. then it's amazing, yeah. you know. So I go to my spice cabinet and I'm like, what flavor do I want today? And I just throw that in and mix everything together and it, you know, it turns out magical. Wonderful. So you've had this simmering. How long will you let it go? So I'll let it simmer for about uh, really 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. I mean, from start to end, once you've had everything prepped, it's really 20 minutes of cook time. So, um, yeah, so I'll let it cook for about 20 minutes and then we can all sample. But if you could also do this in a slow cooker. Okay. And so in the morning, just put everything in, mm -hmm. you know, make sure your beans are already cooked. And I would even saute the garlic okay. and the onions. But put all that in the slow cooker. Mm -hmm. And then by the time you get home, it's perfect. When you saute the garlic and onions, does that add? extra flavor to the dish when it's a little cooking. It does, okay. it does, because you are bringing out the natural oils and flavors that wouldn't necessarily happen if it wasn't already sauteed prior. Nice. 
And what are some other things that you like to make with jackfruit? I love the barbecue jackfruit and I like to make like barbecue pulled pork Me sandwiches. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So and I'll good. make some like <laughs> coleslaw and put that on top mm -hmm. and maybe an apple chutney and Ooh. add that to make, you know, sweetness with the tang. Yeah. Oh, so good. That sounds delicious. Yeah. That's my, that's probably my favorite thing to make with jackfruit. That's amazing. Yeah. So, oh, also earlier this month, I saw you on ABC7 and you made grub. Dip? Crab dip. Can you tell me about that? Yes. Yeah, so my that's my vegan crab dip. Okay. And I call it grab dip because I literally can't stop grabbing it. <laughs> it's so good. But um, I use jackfruit too. Okay. You know, sometimes. But in this particular recipe, I did hearts of palm. Okay. But you could do either one because it's going to give you the texture of crab once you've blended it into your uh, food processor. Mm -hmm. And then I just added vegan mayo, mm -hmm. relish, mm -hmm. and the key to it is nori. Okay. You add the nori sheets, just dice it up, and that's going to give you the sea the sea flavor. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then I added some other spices, mix it together, and it was mwah. So Ooh, good. Yummy. <laughs> grab dip. Grab, grab dip. dip. Is that on your website? That is on my website. Is Damn it? Good Vegan. You can download that under free recipes. Wonderful. That sounds amazing. So uh, let me check the time. And let's see where we're at because yeah. I want to dig into this. And I think maybe a few people who are here at the live broadcast want to taste some chili too. So yeah. let's get this served up so people can taste this chili. How about you come in on the right side of the stage if you can? This, ball, this looks so good. And it has such a rich, deep color. Yes. Because you got to see the green, the yeah. red. So yummy. So, everybody. And then there's vegan oh cheese gosh. down at the end, so feel free to sprinkle with some vegan yeah. cheese when you taste it. Yeah. Yes. So. You want cheese? Yes, of course. I want <laughs> <laughs> Do you want it spicy or just uh, awesome? Some spice. All right. Do you guys want yes, spicy? Yes, of course. Okay. Oh, yes, good. Go. Go. Here you go. Do you want cheese too? Uh, yes, thank you. I want spicy. Spicy and cheese. <laughs> yeah. And so cheese. Good. Oh, yeah. All right. So for this jackfruit, where in the grocery store can you find it? Is it frozen? No, it's in the, like, um, like where you would get the dairy products, mm -hmm. typically. Okay. I know in Whole Foods, it's definitely near the dairy products. Okay. So where I would find, like, vegan A's or right. other, like, like seitan. And and, those, like, vegan specialty foods. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you. Danny, this is so wow. good. Is it good? Yay. Yeah. So it's really flavorful. And you see how quick that was? It was super fast. We did this in real time, so it's like real there's no editing to make it look easier than it is. Exactly. <laughs> like, um, uh, yes, yeah, a little. Yeah, this doesn't taste like it only cooked for, Thank what, you. 10 minutes? Mm -hmm. 15 minutes? Literally, literally 10 minutes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Very good. Wow. Is comfort. it good? Oh, okay. Yeah. Wonderful comfort food. Thank and you. the jackfruit is a nice touch. Mm. 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 Let me try. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh, this would be so good with like tortilla chips too. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Bread. I do. <laughs> I do <laughs> love making like uh, nachos and adding some cheese and putting mm -hmm. chili on top. Mm -hmm. Or if you have a ca carrot dog. Oh yeah. You mm -hmm. can do uh, yeah. carrot dogs with chili on top. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the jackfruit is like a really good texture. Mm -hmm. I like chili when it's just beans sometimes, but you kind of feel like you're missing something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the jackfruit really, really like. Mm -hmm. Just brings us up a whole level. Wow. You know, so when you have to stop, say, mm, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone yeah. would miss me if they had this. I don't think they'd be able yeah. to tell it wasn't in there. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I've definitely served chili at events before and didn't tell them it was vegan. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what? There's no meat in there? I'm like, <laughs> no. Because mm -hmm. I've used other meat replacements. But I love the jackfruit. Yeah. It's just, and then because it's already seasoned, you Tex Mex. It just adds so much more flavor. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. so quick. Yeah. I find with like sharing food, just good food with people too, it's more important to highlight what's there instead of focusing on what's not there. So exactly, it's like, there's so much good stuff in here that we don't need to focus on what's missing because, mm -hmm. I mean, this dish is perfect as it is. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and and it's really like you're not missing much because I mean. I guess typically people would put ground beef mm -hmm. and then they season it mm -hmm. with all the seasoning. So it's like you're really just taking out texture. Yeah. Right? The same seasoning. So, yeah, that's the same seasoning. Yeah, literally. same seasonings. Everything else is the same, literally. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, with adding the seasoning, I mean, adding the jackfruit, that gives you back the texture mm -hmm. that you're like missing that bite. You're mm -hmm. like, okay, this is, this is a full body, hearty, comfort so chili. Yeah. So yes. Good. 
Yes, amazing. This is so delicious. This is definitely going to be in my rotation this fall. Oh, yeah, cold wonderful. Water, the weather is coming, unfortunately. So mm -hmm. Yeah, but it gives us a reason to eat warm, comforting food. Yeah. And actually, we designed some amazing uh, post recipe postcards oh, featuring this um, re featuring this recipe. So you can find it on tribeg.com slash recipes. We'll be posting it next week. And also, if you happen to be able to pick up one of our tote bags at various places we'll be telling you about later in this broadcast, you'll be able to find a recipe card in there as well. So, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. delicious. Yes. This this is uh, oil free. Mm. So that's another yeah. thing. Oil yeah. free. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and, um, and I didn't put any salt. Mm -hmm. The only salt would have been added is whatever was in the jackfruit. Mm -hmm. Wow. And um, the cheese, if there's any. Um, and I believe the uh, veggie broth was like low sodium. Yeah. So it's very low on salt here. And you don't miss it. I'm I not missing it at all. Yeah. I would have never realized. Never exactly. Never, never, never. I think if I had put salt, it would have been too, been too, too much. much. Yeah. It would have taken it's away so from it. Down. So, yeah. So definitely skip the salt on this one. But mm. oh, so good. <laughs> so, so good. So good. And it's cheap. Yeah. This is very inexpensive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this recipe, I mean, I don't know the exact amount. But you could do this probably for per serving, probably two dollars per serving. Yeah. Especially if um, you know if you didn't have the vegan cheese on top, mm -hmm. then definitely you know two dollars per serving. Mm -hmm. And if you made your own bees, super cheap, super cost effective, mm -hmm. and yummy and damn good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Danny. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. This Absolutely. Is amazing. Thank you. We look forward to having you back in the office. Awesome. Give me more good stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> yes. Thanks everybody for joining. Thank us. you. So we're gonna clean up this set. And then we're going to start, uh, I'm going to show you a few cool new vegan items that we found at Expo East yesterday. So watch us while we clean and we'll get into the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. No problem. Um, we um, and I first wanted to say a huge thanks to Danny McGee for the cooking demo that she just showcased her chili. And you can find Danny McGee online on Damn Good Vegan's website, social media accounts, and as she mentioned, she does cooking demos in the area. We have one of them listed on our website, cok.net, on our events page. And that one is happening tomorrow in Mount Rainier in, uh, in Maryland. And we'll be giving away some of those tote bags that we mentioned earlier as well at that event. So, but now I'm so excited. We have Busboys and Poets here with us. This is Max with Busboys. And Busboys has been one of the biggest supporters of this event for years, not only as a restaurant vendor, but also hosting our beer garden at the event. And this year, the plan was to host, the Busboys is going to host our music tent. But um, but unfortunately, we're here now, at least. The celebration is still happening. We're so lucky that we have a Busboys Tacoma, literally next door to right our office. Right around the corner, yeah. So we get to go there all the time. <laughs> but there are several locations in the area. Um, That's right. So yeah, talk a little bit about that, because I know there's a new location that, that the K Street just moved over to a new location. There's an Anacostia location opening up. Yeah, that's right. We have a lot of moving and shaking going on right now. We have moved from our 5th and K location across the street to what we're now calling drum roll 450K. <laughs> but it is a vastly different space. It is beautiful and Baroque and it's going to have some brilliant events coming up soon. So I urge everybody to stop by and check out our little book arch. Um, we have an Anacostia location open up as well, which you mentioned. Right now, it's looking like the end of this year or the beginning of next year. Excellent. That's the most accurate information I can give you right now. And the now. original at 14th and, at 14th B. and B. That's right. We also have a location in the village of Sherlington, just outside of Arlington. Uh, we have our Brookland location next to Catholic University. Uh, we also have our Hyattsville location, not that far away from here yeah. as well. And I, I think that's all six. Yeah. Did I miss any? 
No, no, okay, I, I, I think know. that's it. Yeah, yeah. And you guys host a lot of events inside all the different locations as well. So check out busboysandpoets.com. Mm -hmm. Open mics four nights yeah. a week, sometimes five, depending on which week. Actually, we do an ASL open mic, a youth open mic, a beltway slam event as well. So there's always something going there's on. Comedy our, show coming there's up. There's no comedy. Saw. There's trivia <laughs> night now. Yeah. Twice a, a month, actually, right here at its Tacoma location. Very fun. Yeah. yeah Movie screenings, some, authors coming in. Documentaries. All yeah. Yeah, kind of bookstores inside each restaurant. That's right, yes. And now they're wholly owned busboys bookstores oh, okay, as well. Good. Yeah, so it's no longer a partnership. It's our it's our own thing, and we get the control of top to tail. So, really so one cool. of the things that I love about busboys, it's not just about the food. It's about the community. That is right. And yeah. But but the food. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit yeah. about the food because busboys is, it has an amazing menu with so many vegan options. Right, right. And each time the menu changes, I notice more and more vegan options on there. And yeah. they're all phenomenal. Yeah, well, thank you. First of all, it's very kind. It's always nice to hear that. Um, but yeah, you can't be a restaurant and have food be your second priority. So uh, one of our angles has always been the idea that we're committed to justice in various different spheres. Uh, and committing to a lot of vegetarian and vegan options is our foray into what I would call food justice. Uh, it's very important to us that uh, the way we produce and consume food remain sustainable and remain it's cruelty free as possible, which is why um, over the last few months, as you mentioned, Bus Boys has been getting more and more vegetarian and vegan friendly options. We just got voted by, uh, uh, gosh, help me out. What is the name of the publication that I'm thinking of right now? Uh, there are, well, there are a few different books coming out. Washington Post does think, one, City Paper does one. Yeah, I think it was the City Paper, right. That's right, City Paper, most vegan, vegetarian friendly options. Um, but uh, over the next couple of years, we're going to be transitioning out most of our uh, meat, dairy, and egg-based dishes and replacing them with more ah. vegetarian-friendly options. Uh, that's why it was so important to support VegFest from the beginning for us as well, because we think that um, we've reached a point where people are sort of starting to understand the true cost of eating meat and animal products and are consciously making the decision to avoid that market and mm -hmm. make the world a more sustainable less cruel, more compassionate kind of place. Yeah. Um, but obviously, no matter how much good you want to do, food can't be your second priority. So you have to <laughs> yeah. find inventive yeah. and interesting ways. And I think it's really been a fun adventure for everyone involved in figuring out, well, how can we serve um, homestyle mac and cheese? Because one of our uh, cuisine influences is Southern United States comfort food. But how can we make it in a way it doesn't have any eggs, doesn't have any cheese, uh, you know, has as few allergens as possible. We're still working on that. This pasta still has wheat in it, so it's not as accessible to everybody as it should be, but, you know, we're pushing on that front, too. And we did it, and yeah. it's amazing. It's and I didn't even know the first time I ate it that it was vegan. Oh, that yeah. Was I think that's one of the benefits of yeah. and these nachos. Right, the vegan nachos as well. So, uh, as you can see, there's a big dollop of sour cream on there that yeah. is actually vegan sour cream. Yeah, and there's um, melted cheese throughout. This is one of my favorite dishes cheese. to get to share at a table mm -hmm. with a group of people. I agree. Yeah, yeah. and what I, what I really love about the, the way that Best Boys has been represented at DC Veg Fest is a few years ago, you all were testing out your vegan sliders mm -hmm. and using the yeah. DC Veg Fest as a platform yeah. to kind of gauge response. It's now permanently on the menu. And last year, you tested out your mac and cheese. Yeah. And yeah. now that became permanently on the menu. So yes. that's a fun way to kind of gauge. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And we love being able to come to events like this, especially events that we've had a long history with and kind of throwing new ideas out there, seeing how people will react to them. Because yeah. uh, my dad was a cook. I'm a cook. Uh, a lot of my friends are cooks. And boy, do you make a lot of mistakes <laughs> when you're developing a new recipe, you know? Like, it doesn't matter what it is, even if you think you've got the recipe down to a T, there's always something that could be made better, and the best way to figure out what could be made better is just just trying something, offering it to your yeah. customers, to your you friends, and just saying, like, oh, what did you yeah. get in size? I think that original recipe probably didn't use the lentil mix that we have now, yeah. and we tweaked it a little bit. And honestly, you know, the texture is not 100% like real beef, but I don't think people really necessarily are looking for that anymore. Right. Right. Uh, at one point, that was definitely the market trend of like, it feels like real chicken. It feels, you know, have the same comfort of when you used to slam yeah. buffalo wings down without <laughs> the guilt. Um, but now I think people really are like, oh, this is made from 
just lentils and carrots and a little bit of garlic and spices. That's amazing. It tastes yeah, so good. Simple and flavorful. Yeah, exactly. And you know, at the end of the day, as much as we all love haute cuisine and nouvelle cuisine with its delicately arranged <laughs> little garnishes, I think food should just be simple and good yeah. at the end of the day, really. <laughs> and I know the vegan sliders are on your happy hour menu. Yes, so they are. We take yes. advantage of that quite oh, often. Yeah. Here. Oh yeah. So <laughs> it's just and the the what's the other vegan item on the bed today? Yeah. As well. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We, again, we wanted to make sure that like <laughs> people who have whatever dietary restrictions aren't coming to happy hour and going, I'm gonna take the full priced stuff right. because I can't <laughs> eat any of the happy hours. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you again to Bus Boys. I appreciate you coming over. We're gonna be indulging in some of this food. Yeah. And um, please, if you haven't yet checked out Bus Boys and Poets, they have six locations in the area. So please stop by, check it out. They have an amazing vegan menu. It's really a great place to bring your pre-vegan friends and family to check out great, delicious vegan options. Show them that it doesn't have to taste bad. Yeah. You know? Don't even tell them that the nachos or mac and cheese are vegan. Wait till the very end. Yeah, <laughs> everything is good. Well, do I have a surprise for you? And vegan desserts are on your menu, too. Vegan so desserts are on our menu as well. Vegan cheesecake, yeah. vegan brownie, vegan cheesecake with a scoop of the vegan ice cream yeah. on the side. It should be illegal. It's, it's too good. <laughs> Well, thank you again for coming in. I course, appreciate it. And we'll uh, definitely see you soon. Yes, of right? course. Enjoy. Thank you so much. Right. I'm going to eat some right yeah, now. Just yeah, I think we're going to be shifting over to Jessica Carter again. Yeah. She's going to be talking about some of our vendors, product mm -hmm. donations that we've gotten. We'll do some cooking um, recipe videos for you and some of our sponsors. So take it away, Jess. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Jess here, and I just want to do a bit of show and tell of some amazing new vegan goodies that you can find in stores near you, as well as well as give some shout outs to some of our vendors who would have been joining us at the Veg Fest today, and talk to you about a giveaway for this air fryer. So, to start off, Revolution Gelato is a new dairy-free ice cream company, and they have amazing flavors for you to try, including cardamom spice, uh, we've got mango, vanilla, um, Darkest chocolate. Uh, let's see what else we got. Pressed coffee and orange cream. So gelato personally is my favorite creamy frozen treat. And uh, it's not that easy to find it in a plant-based form. So if you love gelato like me, you might want to look for this brand and check it out. Next up, we've got tree lime cheese. So they have some of the most delicious cashew-based spreadable cheeses on the market. And they have this brand new product coming out called cashew cream cheese. So it is really great because it's all vegan and there are very few actual ingredients in this. And all it has is cashew nuts, filtered water, sea salt, and probiotic bacteria. So this is the new product. It's not on the market yet, but you know that you heard about it here first from the DC Veg Fest Virtual Festival. Next up, we wanna thank our vendor, Poto, for we're giving us some of their amazing tofu products to sample and try out and share with you all. So Hodo makes a variety of spiced tofu products as well as um, dishes that are already made that you can microwave. So here we have their spicy cube tofu in Harissa. I had the opportunity to try this before and if you like spice, you're gonna love this tofu. It's really delicious. And then they also have these Yuba organic sheets. Now, I'm going to be honest, I haven't used these before, but I look forward to coming up with a brand new recipe and sharing it on tryveg.com with you. I need to do a little more research so to learn about what Yuba is and how you use it in cooking. Have you tried Yuba sheets before? Comment below. Okay, and then next up, we have a beautiful array of products from No Evil Foods. Now, I see No Evil Foods all the time at my local co-op here in Tacoma Park, and so let's go over what they've got here today. We've got some no chicken comrade pluck. So this is a vegan plant-based chicken style meat and it is made from wheat gluten. We've also got some, what is this? Pit boss. So this is like a barbecue pulled pork style plant-based meat. We've also got some sausages here and I'm really excited to experiment with these. Like I was mentioning with Danny, the cold weather is coming unfortunately, but that gives us an excuse to eat warm comforting foods and so i think this sausage will go great in like a vegan jambalaya or something like that so when we create the recipe we'll definitely share it with you on tryveg.com and then we've also got this chorizo so chorizo is a mexican style sausage it has lots of paprika in it and it adds a lot of richness to foods so i think this will go great in a tofu scramble if you want to do something kind of like 
vegan huevos rancheros with chorizo. So look out for a recipe for chorizo with no evil foods. Now the moment we've all been waiting for. Details about how you can win this Go Wise air fryer. We want to make it simple for you. So all you have to do is throughout this broadcast, comment why you love the DC Veg Fest. One comment per person, um, but you will have a chance to win this fryer. We're going to randomly select someone next week and make an announcement online. So who has an air fryer? I know some few people out there who have air fryers and they make some really good looking stuff like uh, cauliflower buffalo wings and tater tots and all kind of good air fryer stuff. So what would you make with your air fryer? Comment below as well as the reason you love VC Veg Fest for a chance to win. This is our show and tell and um, let's see what we've got coming next. Okay. I'm muted, right? Okay. Uh, thank you, Jessica. So we are going live now with Carol Adams and Ginny Messina. Are you guys on? Can you see? Can I'm on. I can see. Yay. Uh, yeah. Hey, this is so fantastic. This is the most <laughs> it is. It's great to see you. Yes. It's so exciting to see you too. Uh, well, I want to welcome you guys to the first ever virtual DC Veg Fest. We would have <laughs> much preferred to have you in person in DC, but this is the next best thing. So thank you for joining us. And yeah, thank um, you. We're so impressed that you pulled this off. It's got to be a heartbreak to have <laughs> Did lost. Carol disappear? Am I here? I see Carol. Is Carol on? I'm Yay. here. Ginny, do you see Carol? I don't. Are we good? Yeah, all right. I think we are good. I think we okay. are good. Okay, I think we're all live, all three of us. So Carol, as you were saying, yes, yeah, it's been such a heartbreak to have to cancel this event. Um, and we appreciate everyone's support and understanding over the last few days. And um, and like I said, this was the next best thing to having you both in DC. So thank you for everything. Thanks for your creativity. Yeah, thanks. And this is fun. <laughs> so I want I want to get started a little bit about you know hopefully what you would have been able to present at the DC Veg Fest, even though this is a different audience and a different venue. But tell us a little. You guys have a book coming out, and I'm so excited about it. Can you tell us a little bit about Protest Kitchen? Um, I'll, Kitty jumps in. Can, Kitty. I'm, waiting for, I'm waiting for Carol to, to jump in, but I will, I will jump in. Um, Protest Kitchen is, uh, we wrote Protest Kitchen because we wanted people to see that um, the kitchen is a place where we can address regressive politics. You know, we think, when we think about protesting and we think about activism, we think about being out in the street and um, being at demonstrations and knocking on doors and, and all of those things are wonderful, but not everybody can do that all of the time. Uh, you know, time is a factor, uh, you know, for some people, energy is a factor. Sometimes you just, you just kind of poop out when, when you've been an activist for a long time, we all know about burnout. So we wanted to make the point that you can do something that is, that is a part of the resistance three times a day in your kitchen and anybody can do it. It's really easy. All you have to do is adopt a vegan diet. We wanted to show how veganism is part of social justice activism, that it's not that we're out there and then we come home and there's a disconnect, but, and we also wanted to encourage progressives and those who are really involved in social justice activism to see that when they come in the house, there's still some activism that needs to happen in the kitchen. Um, and as we say, what happens in the kitchen doesn't stay in the kitchen. So we identified several, areas of concern. Um, the first was this nostalgia for the 1950s that's been noted by those who supported uh, Donald Trump for presidency. And this nostalgia, well, as one commentator says, leave it to Beaver is not a documentary. Um, the image of what the 50s was like is completely unrelated to what the 50s were like. It was a very repressive time. Um, Women could not uh, buy houses, they couldn't have credit cards, they weren't serving on juries in some places. African-Americans who tried to uh, move into the suburbs were met with violence. 
there was redlining and uh, mortgage control. Um, gays and lesbians were forced out of the federal government. Uh, they were more victims uh, uh, of um, harassment sometimes than, than the communist scare of the 50s. But one of the things that's true about the 50s that's consistent to today, since we've left some of these problems in terms of um, you know, ex some of the explicit disc discrimination and the Jim Crow laws behind. But one of the things that's true is factory farms. In the 1950s, factory farms really came into their own in the United States. Um, there was a transition to getting meat and dairy from these huge industrial warehouses, and that's consistent to today. And so we wanted to show how that adaptation or that you know, so-called industrial innovation isn't just, you know, decimating the environment, bad for the animals, bad for us, but actually is unrepresentative of how people ate. They didn't eat that much meat. The majority of people in the world are unable to digest lactose. That's the normal. So we wanted to reclaim the kinds of diets that, uh, were typical or accepted before the 1950s sort of wrenched uh, dietary nutrition into a different area. And really, we ended up with some real racist policies around eating dairy. I'll jump, let Ginny jump in. <laughs> Yeah, well, I also, you touched a little bit about, about the environmental impact of factory farming. And, and then you also talk a lot about the social justice connections with our food choices. So where does climate change fit in as a social justice issue? And how is that direct, how is that discussed in the book? Um, Erica, I cannot see or hear Carol. So if I'm talking over her or repeating anything that she says, I apologize for that. Um, we did talk a lot about, about climate change as a human rights issue, as a justice issue, because it, you know we all live on this earth, everybody's affected by climate change and global warming, but the impacts are, are probably the worst on people living in the poorest countries where um, they, you know, they, have, they don't have the resources to respond to things like rising sea levels and natural disasters and food shortages and drought. It even creates a, an, an environment for th that, um, a, a culture and an environment where terrorism is, is more likely or where terrorism can grow more easily. And of course, you know, we're seeing in our own country right now with the hurricanes in, in the Carolinas that, um, that, you know, it's the people who can't evacuate from those hurricanes uh, that don't evacuate often can't. They often don't have the resources to evacuate. And we're seeing we're concerned about the the manure legumes on hog farms and whether those are going to be breached. And those are located in low income communities, communities of color. So these are all all social justice issues, all human rights issues. And it really it, it gives for those of us who do have a choice about what we can eat, for those of us who have that privilege, it really presents us with a with a powerful opportunity to eat in a way that reduces the impacts of climate change. And um, and, and, and it's important because those impacts are, are felt by so many people who may not have that opportunity or that choice. Yeah, I mean, you know that there are some recipes in the book as well. So I was hoping maybe one of you wanted to talk about that. And also, um, you know, Ginny, you have some other books out as well that talk about a lot of the nutritional impacts of a vegan diet. And that kind of goes along, you know, with this holistic approach um, that the, this new book takes on that you guys have both worked on together. Um, but maybe you can touch upon some of your previous books and work as well as, you know, what are some of the recipes people can expect in this book? Um, well, so I, this is a, this was a new direction for me because of course I'm a dietitian. My earlier books are, are about nutrition, about vegan nutrition. So I've written uh, Vegan for Life and Vegan for Her. Carol and I wrote Never Too Late to Go Vegan for people over the age of 50 who are thinking about moving towards a plant-based diet. Um, we have a little bit of nutrition information in this book because we talk about burnout and activism overload and how diet can actually help with that. Um, 
choosing choosing plant foods, choosing more whole plant foods reduces inflammation in the body. And inflammation is one condition that is that gives that can make depression worse and make stress worse. So this is a way in which a vegan diet impacts um, all of these issues around us, but also has an impact on our own ability to respond to those issues and, and deal with them. I think one of the things we wanted to do was pair recipes with the sort of theoretical concept we were discussing. So in the first chapter, when we talk about farms and black digestion, we immediately go into how to taste test plant-based milks how to use plant-based milks. And then we provided recipes for that. For a chapter on climate change, we'll include recipes that help you take up less climate space. Mm -hmm. Meat eaters and dairy consumers are taking, are, are taking up more climate space. Um, so we're trying to help people take up less. I'm having a little echo. I am. You have an echo all to go on if there's no echo for you. No, I think it's, I, I, think, I hear it a little bit, but it might be gone. Okay. Um, for instance, we have a chapter on misogyny. Misogyny in animal agriculture and how that bleeds into attitudes to the use of female bodies for reproduction exploitation both for milk eggs and for babies so we would then have recipes that help you move away from benefiting from the exploitation of female animals um, we have a chapter on food justice we highlight the activism of some food justice workers Lauren Ornelas in uh, with food empowerment project Don Moncrief and well-fed world I know they're a sponsor of the veg fest uh, Mia McDonald and Brider Green and Brenda Sanders here in Baltimore, which is where I am right now, uh, with Thrive. And we are trying to show how being vegan, being committed to animal concerns also helps with food justice. And so for that chapter, we include a recipe on mac and cheese. Well, I know I am. I, this book sounds amazing. And I am eager to get my hands on it. It's such, it's, and the timing of this book feels so perfect um, for everything happening in our society today. It kind of ties in all of these issues that have really been, I think, sort of this undertone that's really coming out more publicly. And there's so much more discourse on these issues. So the timing of this book to me just feels so perfect. Um, how can people, when is it coming out? Where can people get it? Where can they learn more? Your website, like, tell us a little bit about that. Uh, why don't we have Ginny go first, and she can't hear me, and then I'll okay. jump in. Ginny, this is up to you. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Um, it's, of course, it's available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble online. And um, also for people who prefer to shop in indie bookstores, we encourage that. Please ask your local bookstore to order it. Uh, a lot of, of local bookstores have, have shown considerable interest in it. So hopefully it will be easy to find. Um, we have a blog on Medium right now where we're writing about uh, um, some of the issues related to the book. And um, Carol and I both have information about the book on our websites. Hers is caroljadams.com and mine is theveganrd.com. And we're also doing book signings and book talks um, on my website, caroljadams.com slash events. People can find out where uh, I'll be. Ginny will be at the Boston Veg Fest. We're gonna be on the West Coast right around the election. Um, it's also going to be an audio book. And uh, as Ginny said, it's it, it's available online. It's released October 1st. But we really encourage people to support their independent bookstores. And as part of this sort of uh, rearranged DC Veg Fest, I'm going to be back in town two weeks from tomorrow doing a book signing tied in with uh, COK. And yeah. I know you'll probably be announcing more on that. But um, we'll be. Um, uh, with the bookstore that generally provides the books for VegFest. Yeah, and, City Bookshop. And I'm just thrilled about that. Yeah, yeah, we are too. We are actually just getting ready to announce it. This is 
the first public announcement of it. We're so thrilled that you'll be in town. I think you're you're doing an event in Baltimore the day before that. Yes, so, I'll be at the Red Emma's uh, uh, venue at the Baltimore Book Fair on the 29th and then uh, with you all on September 30th. There, yeah, Sunday the 30th at East City Bookshop and, and that's in Southeast and it's not too far from where the DC Veg Fest would have been hosted. And we will have details about that on our website and all over social media as soon as we can. Erica, you've gone blank, but so I can't, I'm not sure uh, what you said, but I think that perhaps you're trying to wrap up this section. So I'll just say Protest Kitchen was written for to help vegans interpret our social justice work to non-vegans and to help non-vegans understand how veganism is part of being a progressive resistor in these times. It, I'm so. This is, it's such an amazing um, opportunity to have this discussion in the vegan community and also outside of the vegan community. So thank you both for joining us today. Thank you both for writing this really important book with so many topics that I think are, are resonating more and more in the animal rights community and hopefully will resonate to others outside of the community as well. So thank you all um, for joining us for this interview with Carl Adams and Jenny Messina. And we'll have much more information about them on social media and on our website as well. And um, I think from here, we are moving back over to Jessica and Jessica. And uh, I think we're going to be sharing some love mail. Is that what we're doing? We'll find out. We'll just pass it on over to them and see what's going on. Thank you again. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to our main stage. Thank you, Erica, for that interview Carol and Jenny thank you for joining us so today I just wanted to remind you again that this air fryer is available for giveaway all you have to do is write in the comments why you love DC Veg Fest okay so and also if you want to this is just for fun you can write what you would do or what you would make with your air fryer so here we want to just take some time to recognize some of our sponsors um, several restaurants have sponsored benefits this month in the D.C. area to support the D.C. Veg Fest because it's a huge undertaking and we want to keep it free so that we can have as many people as possible enjoying all that the Veg Fest has to offer so that we can see that compassion is a great lifestyle for everyone. Not only does it benefit us, but it benefits the animals and the planet. So first of all, we want to thank Brewing Good Coffee Company um, for hosting a benefit for us in the month of September to support the D.C. Veg Fest. Um, we actually love brewing good coffee in the office. We oh, drink yeah. it every single day. And they have responsibly sourced coffee beans. And they do great work supporting animal organizations. So thank you so much, Brewing Good Coffee Company, for all you do to support us and all the animal organizations out there. Uh, yes, thank you. <laughs> this is what it comes in. It smells, smells good. Yes. And help keeping uh, us, uh, giving us our energy throughout the day to do yes. our work as Absolutely. we're waking up in the morning. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, next up, we want to thank Custom Pizza and Subs. They are a new vegan restaurant in the Wheaton Mall. Oh, look at this. <laughs> and they, uh, they did a great benefit for us to support the DC Veg Fest. And so we just want to thank them as well. We also want to give a shout out to Green Fair Organic, who did a pizza party and kombucha party to support us. And they gave 100% of those proceeds to us. So thank you so much to everyone at Green Fair Organic for supporting Compassion Over Killing and DC Veg Fest. We love you, we love you, we love you. Thank you. And also we wanna thank Pow Pow. Pow Pow is located in Northeast DC on 8th Street and they recently went all vegan. And we had an opportunity to go to Pow Pow um, and taste a broad array of their menu offerings on the day that they did a restaurant benefit for, for us and it was delicious. We were going crazy as all eating of their food. Their special that day was a jackfruit dish with black beans in their rice and pilaf quinoa is quinoa. Yeah. Quinoa pilaf. Yeah, yeah. There it is. It's so good. So thank you, Pow Pow. We love you. And now we want to share some shout outs to some of our supporters who've been so kind and supportive of us recently. So Jess Carlson, why don't you take it away? Yeah, this has been very nice because obviously it's been challenging for everybody, but um, the support that we have received from so many people um, is we feel it. And, and we just wanted to be able to extend this time to give some of those nice little shout outs to people. So we call this uh, supporter shout outs mm -hmm. right now. So the first one um, is from Mary Ellen Smith from. Hi, so hi, Mary. Um, you know, she says she's bummed it was canceled, but um, 
this is a great idea that we're going virtual. Um, she's going to be watching, and they're going to go try a local restaurant that they've been hearing about instead. Okay. So trying to make something positive out of something negative yeah. today. So you'll have to let us know how that restaurant is that you went and you tried out. Yes, Mary, thank you. Um, also, we have Sierra Smith, and she says, you guys are all true winners. I always understood the need to cancel. And, un and also understood the disappointment for the vendors and attendees. Yes. And so we also recognize that too. So thank you for taking the time to also recognize that to our vendors and attendees that are also being affected today also. Yes. Um, I'm not quite sure who this is from, but they were very nice and it says, you know, I'm sure it was and has always been a lot of hard work for you and everyone involved in putting it all together, which is very much appreciated. And she's gonna definitely miss it. I've been to all of them since it started at GW and saw how it kept growing. And this being that it's the 10th anniversary of the Veg Fest would have been extra special. But she wants to say, in fact, she attributes that the very first Veg Fest in 2000, 2009, she met Tracy McWhorter. And to her, that was um, her, she attributes it to her going vegan today. So that's awesome that, that the Veg Fest just made such a nice impact on her. and towards her compassion for her life. And then uh, the last one I wanna read for this segment is from our friend Colleen Holland. Uh, um, she's the publisher and co-founder of Veg News Magazine. And she says she's sorry. She knows how much work is involved um, to put an event like this. So she's saying her gratitude and support to all of us here at the team and everybody else that is, that is affected. So thank you so much to all of you that are sending that love to all of us. We feel it and we send it back out to all of you. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much for supporting us. We've had so many responses coming in that have been so supportive. And honestly, we were so disappointed. Mm -hmm. We were all here together working away on trying to make final preparations for the Veg Fest when we got the news. So everybody was just kind of taken aback when we realized that we had to cancel the event, but you know, almost immediately we started getting messages of support and we really, 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 really appreciate it. Really. Okay. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um so here we are. We will have many more vendors and sponsors to thank as well as supporters to give shout outs to and you'll have plenty of chances throughout the next hour to win this air fryer comment why you love VC veg fest okay and thank you again to brewing good coffee to custom pizza and subs to green fair and pow pow we really appreciate you all all thank right you. we'll see you in the next segment <laughs> I like cashew, I like oat. I'm drinking my 
Damien, and I'm even trying to pickle it. I like Coco, Coco, Nut, Pink Milk, Crumbs, and Chocolate. You're not a baby cow, so we can make this vow. Try plant milk and you'll see. We don't need no dairy. I like food and bum is wrong. Yeah, just listen to this song. They call me Ticket Vegan, Scrappy Cow. Please don't take my milk right now. I need it for my baby cow. Scream vegan, vegan, vegan now. How about this cheese? We go with bees. Sales, go to the roof. Follow your heart and try to get So now. Hi everyone, thanks again for joining uh, in with us. I'm Jessica, again the Director of Operations here at COK, and I'm super excited to be sitting here right now with our very own Simone, who is our Director of Education and Outreach, and she has brought a wonderful guest here, Valenci. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, adoption and also um, Valenci's story that we have. So welcome, Simone. Thank you. Thanks for coming. It's wonderful to be here. So um, you and I, we talk a lot about adoption. We both have animals that we've adopted from different rescues and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we thought it would be great if you can share a little bit about adoption, why it's important, and Valenci's story with that. OK, so this is Valenci. He is our coworker here at Compassion of Healing. We're lucky enough to have a dog-friendly office. So Valenci is our trash and lab investigator, and he takes his job really seriously. Um, Valenci came into my life in Brazil, where he was a street dog, like thousands of others, millions of others. And um, he was found, he was very wounded on his head, and then he got a graft. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but he has this very cute and unique little mohawk here. And he's just brought so much joy into my life and the life of my family and then the life of everyone here at the office. And just like him, there are so many other dogs in the U.S. waiting for a home. And actually, as you all must know, um, we have a barking lot at DC Veg Fest, and that's put together by our wonderful partners at the Humane Rescue Alliance. And they would have had adoptable dogs out there and adoptable cats um, to bring into your family today. So we want to give a shout out to the Humane Rescue Alliance. And although we don't have a barking uh, lot today, you can definitely go check them out and find a companion animal. If you have space in your heart and your home and in your budget for a responsible, to give uh, an animal that needs a home a responsible forever home, definitely go out to Oglethorpe Road Northwest um, and check out the Humane Rescue Alliance. They're wonderful. They have a state-of-the-art shelter and they've actually brought in animals from Hurricane Florence. As you know, there are lots of animals um, Humans, not only humans, but also non-humans are being affected by this terrible hurricane. And they've actually had a whole group of animals come in from Hurricane Florence. So they oh, wow. do need your support right now. Wow. Um, and it just take, and we know that it takes a lot of work just for them to be able to be bringing those animals in. Did you know how many animals they actually did transport? So I know that yesterday or the day before they got 26 new animals. There are dogs and cats of like different sizes and breed mixes. And I'm sure any and all of them would make a wonderful companion for you. So if 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 it's the correct moment, and they have a great crew out there. I, I was a volunteer there in the past uh, doing dunk training, and they do have this fantastic crew, which also helps you figure out what, what is the best companion for you, um, who they have there that most fits your lifestyle, your moment, and always remember that this is a decision for life. So it's not to be taken lightly. Um, and yeah, really show them our, our support, your support today. Yeah, and um, I, I completely agree. They need our support to be helping all of those fur babies that are out there. And one thing that you point out with the animals that are being evacuated, I think it's important for us to also realize that people that do have that do share a home with um, other animals to be thinking about those disaster plans. So in case something like that was to come up, I wanted to go back to talk a little bit about 
adoption. And, mm -hmm. and since we have this great, um, you know, shelter that's here, Humane mm -hmm. Rescue Alliance, can you talk why it's really so important that we should be looking to adopt? Because we know that people can get animals by choosing to go purchase or buying an animal somewhere and why we want to help support these places such as Humane Rescue Alliance. Well, yes, yeah, so both Jessica Carlson and I have been involved in fighting puppy mills. And those are really terrible operations that think of animals as products, as commodities, and not like the, the individuals each one of them are. So it's really, really, really important not to look at like a sweet little puppy in a pet shop or online and like not think about all the suffering that went into mm -hmm. the life of the mother of that um, animal and that animal itself. Um, while there are so many wonderful adoptable animals, Valencia came into our life as a young adult, a lot of people think only puppies bond. Valencia is not only very bonded to me, but to the universe, pretty much. <laughs> She's just a friend to everyone here. Um, so that's a myth. Also, when you adopt an animal from an operation like Humane Rescue Alliance, you're actually freeing up resources so they can go out and help another animal. So you're actually saving two lives. Anytime you adopt one animal, you're helping that animal and you're helping free up those resources for the next animal that they can they can help. Um, adoption also helps people understand that animals are not things. You can't buy friendship. Like you don't go out buying your human friends. <laughs> you help them, you share your life with them. So it's just like the, the philosophical issue behind that also is that you don't buy friendship. You don't buy companionship. You choose them, you know, you choose your friends according to your, you know, how your chemistry right. goes. So that can also um, work with our companionship with other animals. So definitely adopt and spread the message that adopting is the correct thing to do. And we always want to believe that um, when he comes to us that he's favoring us, but we know that he loves everybody. <laughs> and before we go, there was one other question that um, I wanted you to touch on a little bit. And it's, you know, if people can't share their homes with, uh, whether it's a dog or cat or rabbits or, game or anything, mm -hmm. what are some other ways that they can help support shelters and rescues such as Humane Rescue Alliance? But also besides doing that, what's another level they can take it to help all of our animal friends, not just ones that might live inside our homes with us. Yes, yeah, so um, definitely adoption is a big step because it's a step for life and it's not the correct step for everyone at every moment of their lives. So what people can do is they can volunteer at shelters, they can foster. If you can only have that commitment for a little while, you can donate your time, your resources. And we, we like to say that Cats and dogs and other companion animals are gateway animals for us to realize that every animal, not only cats and dogs, but pigs and cows and chickens and turkeys, each one is an individual. So you can actually help animals by keeping them off your plates every single day. So expand that compassion towards other animals and you can help them in so many different ways. Expand that message of love and compassion to every single animal out there. Yeah, I absolutely agree. And Simone, thank you for taking the time to share that information. And I think one way that we can also end with this is also besides all of those great ideas that you're saying, another great way is also offering support if it's financial ways that you're able to do with donations to rescues and organizations because your money is really what helps us be able to continue to do the work, whether it's us here at COK or if it's our animal shelters with our dogs and our cats and our rabbit friends. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Simone and Valencia. He's he's a little shy today, <laughs> but we will see us. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but thank you so much for tuning. And you can all and please comment any questions or anything. Yeah, do we else? have any questions from the commenters? So we've mainly been getting messages of support and people talking about their experiences with adopting animals. So uh, Deborah actually shared my husband helped with the animal transport through DC for Actors for Animals. So glad he was able to help with this. Um, and then Levi just shared that he adopted out his first dog last weekend from Homeward Trails Animal Rescue. 
Yay. And That's another really cool organization. And um, just um, hopping in on that comment, that's a really great comment also about helping with transportation. Most shelters, most res rescue organizations often need people to do just a leg of transportation, mm -hmm. especially in disaster moments like this, moving all these animals from the south, from the affected hurricane areas to the north um, has been a challenge. So you can hop on to any of these wonderful rescue organizations in the area and see if you can help with transportation. It might be two, three, four hours of driving in one day might help save an animal's lives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there's and you can look up those places or reach out to the rescues and shelters and they can you can sign up and get on a list. And if it's something you can commit to, great, you let them know. And if you can't, you just let them know that you're not able to. I've helped in areas in Pennsylvania and it's nice. It's rewarding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. Anything else, Jess? Um, I think that's all. Thank you so yeah. much. <laughs> Thanks, Simone. Thank you. Thank you, Marie. <laughs> for coming out. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. Please, Keep please, the love. Please, please, please. <laughs> We're waving. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, um, I think I'm on now, and uh, apologies if my screen is a little blurry. Um, I've been uh, working through a little bit of a uh, uh, issue there, but um, but yeah, thank you uh, all for joining and um, huge thank you, major props to everybody out there in the DC office for putting all this together. Um, we all know how much work it's been and uh, everything that you've been going through, so thank you. Um, so uh, I'll just start with a little bit of a uh, quick background on myself. Um, sorry, this blurry screen is a little distracting, but... Um, so yeah, I'll just start with a little bit of a background. Um, I got involved in animal rights uh, in 2005 uh, when my dog Curly died. Uh, that was a really difficult time for me. Uh, I really uh, opened up my eyes to uh, the way animals are treated in the world. And um, I was in between jobs at the time and I started looking up uh, a lot of different pet loss types of websites. And I came across information on how dogs are eaten and slaughtered in other countries. Um, and I started to picture Curly in those situations and uh, really envision him being born into a factory farm and being in those situations, being hit and kicked, uh, beaten, and then uh, killed and on someone's plate. And that thought was really disturbing for me, but then I would still turn around and eat chicken and tuna and everything else. And um, it... Um, Sorry, just getting a message about something uh, about my webcam. I know it's a little blurry. I don't know. I don't have anything on it right now. Um, so I'm trying to. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so um, I at that point after um, I started to think of Curly in those situations, that is something that um, really. Uh, <laughs> sorry, this blurriness is really distracting. Um, that's something that really uh, made me think and it kind of clicked for me. And so um, a couple weeks after he died, I decided to stop eating animals. Uh, and then a couple months after that, I was working in the field as an undercover investigator. Uh, and I spent about four years in the field. Um, and a lot of people ask what it's like. They kind of want to get an idea of what it's like to be out there. Uh, <laughs> there's really no easy answer to that. Uh, it's pretty hard to convey what it's like to be out there uh, working undercover. Um, there's a lot of different uh, aspects. And if you really boil it all down uh, to one word, it would have to be overwhelming. Uh, from a, a physical standpoint, you're working very heavy manual labor jobs. You are uh, working maybe 10, 12, 14 or more hours per day on the farm site. Uh, you are working uh, jobs that are putting your body through a, a large physical strain. Um, you're dead tired, you're sore, you could be injured. Um, and then on top of that, once you get back at night, you essentially have to relive that whole day. 
uh, you're watching your footage, you're going uh, over that whole day to kind of uh, write up what happened. And you could be doing that for six or even seven days a week. Uh, one of the jobs I had on a hog farm was a 12 day on, two day off rotation. So it was incredibly difficult um, to, uh, from a physical standpoint, to really be able to rest and recuperate. Uh, on top of that, from a mental standpoint, it's incredibly mentally draining as well because you're always, um, you know, trying to be aware of every single thing that's going on around you. Uh, all the different um, workers who are around you, are they abusing an animal? Uh, what are they doing? Are they watching you? Are they maybe suspicious of you? Um, you know, it's kind of, it's something that your mind is always replaying everything that's happened just to be sure that you're always one step ahead of everybody. Um, but I think any investigator will tell you that from uh, an emotional standpoint is really what hits you the most. Uh, being in that kind of a situation, being immersed in those environments, uh, your, uh, you know, the sights and the sounds and the smells, everything just kind of hits you, hits you at once. And it's something that um, it, it's, it's hard to describe. Uh, it really is. And not even just that, but it's something that um, when you um, have to participate in some of those uh, actions as well, uh, in order to be there, be on the farm site uh, to document the abuse, the investigators do have to participate in uh, the standard practices. So any day-to-day -day activities that's happening, um, that's really the only way we're able to document uh, the, the abuse that's happening, bring it to law enforcement and bring it to the public. Um, so as I said, if you had to boil it down, it, it's very overwhelming. Uh, it takes a huge toll on an investigator. Um, and so when I was in the field, I worked two jobs uh, in North Carolina, uh, one of which was at a hog farm um, along the coast. Uh, so that's right where uh, Hurricane Florence is hitting. So I do have a really good understanding and an image in my head of really what's happening uh, out there during Hurricane Florence and the effects and everything. Um, I'm sure everyone who's tuned in uh, has seen all the articles, has uh, heard about what's happening uh, with uh, all the farm animals who are out there right now, uh, who essentially are just being abandoned and they're left in their crates, they're left in their um, cages just to essentially drown. And that's catastrophic. Um, it's incredibly horrible and, and it's honestly, it's worse than anything we can imagine. But the reality is that it's really not that much different than the way animals are killed on these farms on a daily basis anyways. Um, a few years ago, we investigated a North Carolina uh, Pilgrim's Chicken Factory Farm, and we documented them burying birds alive under uh, dead and dying birds. And to me, being buried alive under birds or being buried alive under water, it's really not that much different. Um, so, these catastrophes that happen when we see, uh, you know, these hurricanes coming in and we hear these stories about these animals, uh, it creates this, um, this conversation among the public about how horrible that is. But I think our biggest tool is really the awareness and the education, because if we're able to show the public really what's happening, I think they'll be horrified, uh, you know, just on a daily basis of what's happening in these farms. And that's what the good news is, that everyone out there who's watching, you have the ability to uh, help prevent catastrophes like what's happening in Florence uh, from happening again and again and again. Because uh, if you help uh, spread awareness, help spread the education, help uh, show people really what's happening um, in the future, uh, you know, less animals will be going through that. And, and we all know that as time goes by, these storms are going to be getting uh, more frequent, they're going to be getting more powerful, uh, and they're going to be affecting these animals in these same ways. Um, so luckily, because of our investigation, that particular farm uh, was shut down. Uh, that farm, uh, Pilgrims dropped that contract. And uh, because of that, the, uh, the animals who were there are not there today drowning in this storm. So uh, that is the good news. Obviously, there are millions and millions of animals in the path of Florence right now. Uh, in recent years, we had uh, two uh, investigations into uh, Tyson uh, factory farms in Virginia, which is also in the path of Hurricane Florence. And um, we documented just incredibly egregious abuse there. 
Uh, our first Tyson investigation, we documented workers who were hitting, kicking, stomping on, um, smothering the birds, stomping on their heads in order to suffocate them. Um, incredibly uh, horrible abuse, but uh, we were able to work with law enforcement and uh, obtain uh, 24 convictions against nine of those workers. Um, and the, to me, the most important thing is public awareness. The more we're able to help educate people, the more people go vegetarian, go vegan. Um, and that initial uh, release was able to reach millions and millions of people. And then with the ensuing media coverage with the, um, uh, the law enforcement convictions, we were able to reach millions and millions more people. So um, that's where these investigations really have that large impact. Uh, that case as well, we were able to document for the first time a uh, standard practice called boning, which uh, essentially uh, the workers were taking this plastic nose bone uh, and shoving it through the nostrils of the male breeder birds. Um, so we were able to document that for the first time. And because of our investigation, Tyson announced an immediate end to that practice followed by a couple of additional companies immediately. Uh, to date, 17 of the top 20 uh, chicken producers have announced that they are uh, ending, they have already ended or they are committing to ending that practice because of our investigation. Um, so uh, we also had a second Tyson investigation in Virginia. Uh, so our investigators were at multiple farm sites all throughout Virginia for these investigations for Tyson. Um, our second investigation, we documented incredibly egregious abuse as well. Um, we are still working with law enforcement on that case. So, you know, these uh, states which are affected by uh, Florence right now, they're very heavy ag states and we've seen it. We've gone in there a number of times. I've seen it personally, our investigators have seen it. Um, but again, you have the power to uh, help prevent these animals from going through this in the future. The animals who are there now, it, it's, it's sad and it's horrible, but there's really no hope for them. They're already born into the situation. They're already going through it, regardless if they're going through Hurricane Florence or if they are just going through these standard daily practices, they're already there. Uh, there's really no hope for them. Uh, but what we can do is prevent future animals from going through this. Uh, the more we help educate people, the more people choose plant-based options over animal-based options, uh, the fewer animals will be going through uh, these same tortures, whether it's through the hurricane or uh, through uh, the standard daily practices um, or just being killed uh, in a standard way on these farms. Um, a hatchery we investigated a couple years ago, their standard method on a daily basis of killing chicks was to suffocate those chicks in a bag. Again, that's not that much different than being suffocated in water um, for the from the animal's perspective. So uh, I think that. Um, you know, the more we're able to help uh, educate people, um, you know, the more that you help support us, support our investigations, support our investigators, um, spread our investigations, share our investigations. Um, you know, I can't guarantee that every single farm we go into, uh, we will shut that particular farm down the way we did at that Pilgrim's facility. But um, the more we spread awareness and the more people become aware over time, we will shut down the entire animal farming industry. Um, so um, I guess uh, I'll see if we have some questions. Uh, I think I'm still kind of on a blurry screen here, which is still pretty uh, distracting, but um, yeah, so I don't know if we have any questions we want to go to or if anybody um, has anything else. <laughs> um, I can just keep talking about our um, specific investigations. Um, we uh, have um, done a lot of different, uh, at this point, we've done almost every different industry uh, that we, uh, we've gone into and we've seen all the same stuff. We've seen all the same uh, abuses, um, whether it's in the dairy industry, uh, the chicken industry, uh, the hog industry. We've seen all the different abuses, all the different uh, standard practices. It's, it's really pretty horrific. Um, so, um, yeah, so uh, I guess uh, throw it back to y'all out there in DC. I don't know if we uh, have any questions or if anybody has anything. Okay.
Thank you so much, Mike, for talking with us today about the importance of investigations in you know, the work of protecting animals. So now we're gonna talk about what people have been asking us about for days, weeks, months now. How can I get my hands on a DC Veg Fest tote bag? We have so many in the office and we want to give them to you. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go through some of the items in them and then we'll tell you a bit about how you can get one for yourself. Yeah, so first I, I want to say that normally at this event, what we do is we give out a thousand free bags to the first thousand people who show up. Mm -hmm. And in the past several years, I think last year, the first person who showed up was around eight o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Is and that the, right? Yeah, and the veg fest starts at 11. <laughs> it starts at 11. So people are lining up like around the corner, um, starting at like 8, 8, 8.30 a.m. to get one of these free bags. So unfortunately, because we're not there on site to give them away, we've come up with creative ways to distribute them throughout the community, working with a lot of our vendors who've been so supportive of us. But first, we're going to tell you a little bit about what's inside the bag. So these bags, we uh, have been working for several months yeah. with all of the individual sponsors and supporters who've sent us items. And then we had a huge tote bag stuffing party mm -hmm. with about 50 plus volunteers yeah. in our office for several hours, yeah. um, several days before the event to get all of this ready. And we did a little bit of showcasing what was in those bags at the time of that event. But now we have a better display. We're going to highlight all the companies that contributed to this. So. Should we, where do we want to start? Want to start over here? Yeah, I'll start with the left and then you can turn right. over on the right side. So obviously, first of all, there's no tote bag without a tote bag. So we have this beautiful <laughs> light blue tote bag. Um, it highlights our sponsors as well as some of our websites, um, including VegDC.com, where you can find listings of all the amazing vegan and veg friendly restaurants in the DC area, and TryVeg.com, where you can find lots of blog posts and recipes to help you live the vegan life. So. We have some great stickers. Eat like you give a damn. So many stickers, okay? Stickers on stickers. So I hope you have a laptop binder, a uh, person, cat that you want to stick your <laughs> stick all your stickers to. We have these delicious pretzel crisps. I prefer to dip these in hummus. It's a great snack. Um, we have organic protein from Orgain, and Orgain actually has a coupon code that they're uh, providing to us. If you type in um, veg25 on their website, you'll get 25% off your order of protein. So we'll, we'll share that information with you, the, the coupon code specifically, but thank you so much Orgain for offering that for us. Now, I love these. These are cinnamon bears. They're like a gummy cinnamon bear. Oftentimes jelly and gelatin candy candies have gelatin in them and we don't eat gelatin as vegans. And so this is a nice cruelty-free way to get your gummy fix. Um, we also have some delicious Michelle's granola. You can sprinkle this on a yogurt parfait in your oatmeal. Eat it dry when you got right out of the bag. Just yes. Pour it in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Um, and then Carner Capital Blue, which uh, you know focuses on responsible investing, gave us steel straws because we want to save the fishes and all the sea animals by not only not eating them, but by not loading up their home, the ocean, with lots of plastic that harms them and kills them. So. More stickers. I mean, <laughs> stickers. If you want stickers, you need a bag, okay? <laughs> and we have lots of coupons. So I'll go through a stack here, mm -hmm. um, including 20% off We Are Bare Bones, which is casual apparel. We've got $1 off Parm oops, Parma for a vegan Parmesan cheese. We also have 10% off Earth Paint, which is an eco friendly, cruelty free paint craft products. We have one dollar off Follow Your Heart. We just used some Follow Your Heart cheese in Danny's chili recipe, and I'll be using some in my recipe later this afternoon. Um, we have one dollar off Hodo. Any one item, you get one dollar off, which is a great deal. And then you get um, Little Green Me. You get, let's see, 10 day cleanse. Mm -hmm. So they have a special for a cleanse if anybody needs to cleanse themselves out. <laughs> Crazy rumors. This is some good chapstick, okay? Mm -hmm. Usually chapstick or lip balm has beeswax in it, and this does not. This little crazy rumors uh, lip balm is really, really nice, very moisturizing. And you actually get a lip balm in the bag. Yes, yeah, so sample it out to see if you like it, which you probably will, and then you can use a discount to go get a discount, okay? Uh, Miyoko's, everybody's favorite high end vegan cheese. We love Miyoko's, and they have given us a $1 off coupon along with Sweet Earth along with the Jackfruit Company, along with Sunshine Burgers, which I'll be using in my cooking demo later this afternoon. And you will uh, 
Hungry Harvest, which is a regional produce delivery service where you can save money on produce that would be otherwise discarded because it's imperfect or it's been over ordered. So Hungry Harvest, check them out. And then uh, Grainful, they make frozen meals that are healthy and nutritious. So you can get some money off. That's there. actually one free product. Oh. <laughs> You should use this one. Okay, look for this. <laughs> this is like free money. I mean, this is all free money, but like this is a meal. So <laughs> that's real. And then Fruitive, which is a plant-based organic restaurant. And this is 15% off. Now, I don't often see discounts yeah. for restaurants. So this is this is great. Yeah, they have fresh juices as well as vegan meals that you can get. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go through some of the other stuff. Well, we have, as as Jessica was saying, we have even more stickers. So yes. <laughs> Dr. Bronner's, we've talked a little bit about them. This is one of their stickers, and they also have donated um, little soap. So this is sort of like a travel size soap, as well as a little travel toothpaste. Nice. So these are really great when you just need to throw a few things in your bag, mm -hmm. and um, it's also a great sampler if you're not sure you want to buy the whole tube, but you can find those in stores across the country. Mm -hmm. And we have um, every bag comes with a bottle of flax milk. Mm -hmm. So flax. the two different flavors, um, this one here is vanilla, but mm -hmm. we also, some of the bags will have chocolate in them. Yeah. So those are great to drink, to make smoothies, mm -hmm. even for cereal. There's yeah. so much you can do with these. So, um, so look for that in the bag. And this is really cool. Yeah. So this is every box or every bag comes with a full box full size. of this Dea Cheesy Mac. Yes. And we've been, we've, we've tried it in yeah. the office before. I know some of us buy and I've seen people just eating it. Yeah. Um, this is really creamy and great. And it's, a, it's pretty quick and easy to make. Mm -hmm. And um, Dea, uh, as in general as a company, has been really supportive of the work that we've done. Mm -hmm. And they make a ton of other dairy-free products from yogurt, which um, is, I think, one of their newer products out in the market today. Mm -hmm. They have different cheeses. Um, so definitely look out for that company and check this out in, in your bag. Day is also gluten-free and soy-free. So if you, if you care about that, good to know. Right. Um, <laughs> and then Vegan Treats is also one of our top sponsors. Yes. And they um, have these really cool patches that are in every single bag. We've got Main Street Vegan gave us these um, little pouches. And inside, it's a podcast. So inside are earbuds. Oh, no, so you can I, listen to podcasts on the go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So those are really cool um, to check out. And we've got um, Goddess Garden. This is some um, sunscreen mm -hmm. that you can use. And as we, we talked about the lip balm from Crazy Rumors, uh, we also have different flavors. So this one is simply lemon, but whisked, whisk donated um, a thousand cookies that are inside all of the, I don't know what the other flavors are. There's like a double dark chocolate and an oatmeal chocolate chip, and they're all so good. Yeah. yeah. So you'll get one of those in your bags, and everyone will also get a bag of chips um, from Lundberg. And there are a couple of different flavors of these that you'll find in there. We've got um, Earth Science donated a couple of different samples of products. I think some mm -hmm. is shampoo and conditioner. Mm -hmm. This one is a general facial scrub, so you'll find a sample of those. It's in great your to exfoliate at the end of summer, you know, yeah. refresh your skin. That's what I hear in the magazines anyway. More cheese. So <laughs> cheese is one of the things we hear about a lot from people who are, who are learning about going vegan. Yeah. And so we try to offer as much dairy-free options as possible. And this mm -hmm. is from Go Veggie. This is a Parma. You can put it on um, your pasta, on bread, on salad. What else would you put this on? Um, I would put it in pesto if I'm making a vegan pesto. Um, it would be good to sprinkle it with like a tofu scramble or something like that to give it a little oh, zest. That's a great idea. Yeah. Uh, we also have these really cool um, seed and nut butters. Yeah. So we have a, a few different flavors you'll get in the bags. This one is pumpkin seed butter. Mm -hmm. There's also a peanut butter banana flavor. Yeah. And this is a really great company, well made company. Um, they're local and they make these fresh and they're so incredibly creamy and delicious. My favorite is the black pepper cashew butter. Oh. So good. It's good to use them like curries and stir fries too. Yeah. So it's a savory application of the nut butter as well. Very creative. And then Bob's Red Mill this is a great company. They have donated um, protein powder. Mm -hmm. So you'll get either a vanilla or a chocolate. Mm -hmm. This is great in smoothies is mm -hmm. how I often use these. Yeah. But you can also just add these to a lot of different things. You can just drink mm -hmm. it with some water, with milk, with, yeah. with your flax milk if you want. Yeah, yeah. Um, add it to even like yogurts or, or cereal if you want to top it off. Oatmeal. Oatmeal. I stir some protein powder into my cheesy pudding sometimes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And we have some magazines I want to quickly talk about. So USA Vegan is inside all of the tote bags. And we have Thrive Magazine, which is kind of cool because it's sort of like a two-in-one magazine. Yeah. 
So it's, you know, you can go either way, no matter how you read this, you're not yeah. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so there's a lot of cool stuff in here. This is like a food issue. So yeah. That's really exciting. And of course we have a lot of materials from Compassion Over Killing. This is our member magazine um, right here, Compassionate Action. But we also have a triveg.com brochure. This has a recipe on the back, but it's also just quick tips on the benefits of choosing vegan food. So about the environment, about animals, about your health. Mm -hmm. This is a great brochure that you can pass on if you're already vegan, pass it on to your pre-vegan friends and family. Yeah. And as Jess mentioned, on the bag, you can, you'll can you find the veggdc.com logo and website, but we also have our printed guide right here. And this is an abbreviated version of what's on our website. So this is sort of like the appetizer teaser yeah. of what's on the website. This lists, um, I don't know, maybe 100-ish, yeah. um, 50 to 100 local restaurants, either all vegan or very vegan friendly. And then on our website, veggc.com, is over a thousand listings yeah, in yeah. the area where you can get vegan cuisine. So definitely check that out. And then we have our Easy Vegan Recipes brochure. So we've got um, all the different recipes uh, that are on our website. We have a bunch of them located uh, found here in the Easy Vegan Recipes brochure. Wonderful. So that's a bunch of the stuff that's in there. There's even more. We've got a whole bunch of other <laughs> companies that have supported us, but I think we're moving on to the next segment. I'm getting tired just hearing about all of it. I'm getting <laughs> tired of remembering stuffing the bags personally. So yeah. these bags are super robust. And like Erica said, it took us months to gather all of this, all these goodies, and it was a team effort. So um, we're going right to talk now, about where we're going to give them away. Yes, I want to invite up Stuart. I'm going to swap out with Stuart so she can talk about that. Thank you. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, so as Erica and Jess said, we have about a thousand of these tote bags and we want you to have them. Um, but we also want to continue to support our vendors who are supposed to be with us today. Um, so what we're doing is throughout the next week, we are going to be popping up all over DC, Maryland and Virginia um, in secret locations. And we're going to be bringing a bunch of these tote bags with us. So throughout the week, we'll be notifying you where we're going to be, and we'll show up with 20 to 30 tote bags. And the first 20 to 30 people who get there will get their free tote bag. Um, so turn on your notifications. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, at DC Veg Fest to find out where we're going to be. We'll let you know an hour or so before we get there so that you can know where you're going, jump in your car, and come snag a tote. Um, and the really exciting news is that our first one is going to happen this afternoon. Um, we are going to be at Busboys and Poets in Tacoma Park at 3 o'clock today with 30 tote bags. So I'm sure everyone's scrambling now, getting ready to go, because I know everyone wants one. Um, so if you meet us at Busboys, you'll just go in, say, I'm here for a DC Veg Fest tote bag. And you can snag your tote. Um, it's first come, first serve. There's going to be a limited amount. Um, so get there exactly at three o'clock, if not before. Um, and these are going to be at sponsors or sponsors and vendors throughout the region. Um, so it's not required that you make a purchase, but we would like people to support our vendors. Um, so if you want to grab a snack, a meal, uh, that would be fantastic. There's going to be bakeries, lunch spots, uh, full service restaurants, all kinds of stuff to check out. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So three o'clock today at Tacoma Parks, Bus Boys and Poets. So that's just about every day on. we have. Every day. Some days it's several different locations. Yep. So just you have to just stay tuned on social media yep. to find out all the details. Yeah, it'll be, we'll be popping up. You won't know where it's going to be, <laughs> but <laughs> they're going to be really good spots. And that's a good way to find out where in D.C., Virginia, and Maryland you can get vegan food. Uh, we'll be letting you know. Awesome. That's awesome. such a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I think we're moving on now to our cooking demonstration with Elizabeth Alfano. Um, I think, okay. I think we're, we're going to be linking up with her shortly. But, oh, that's right. First, we want to talk about some of our amazing sponsors um, who are going to be at this event handing out some samples. And one of those sponsors is Field Roast. Field Roast is this amazing company based in the Seattle area. They've been making grain meat for I don't know how long, well over a decade, probably wow. longer than that. And they, um, when I first discovered them, I think I was discovering they make these holiday roasts. Okay. And they make celebration roasts, and one of them is like hazelnut. And it's so now they're also making these miniature corn dogs, mm -hmm. which we're going to be, I think, sampling here today. And then they have um, the, the fruitfalo wings, which are like buffalo 
um, chicken wings, but everything is 100% plant-based. Yeah. Field Roast is all a plant-based company. So yeah. what do we got? Tell yeah, us. Yeah, so we had the corn dogs. Personally, corn dogs were my favorite growing up. So I had the opportunity to taste these and they're so good. And then Fruit Below Wings have the buffalo sauce on them. So at this time, I want to invite some of our studio audience to come up <laughs> if they want to sample as well. We can do some live taste testing. Come on up. And you can find these at a lot of different grocery stores. I know Whole Foods sells them. Um, I think you can find them at Giant and other stores as well. But take a look out for Field Roast if you haven't tried it yet. Anyone else want to come up and try these? Anybody else? Come on up. Come on up. You know I like the taste test. All right. Mm -hmm. The corn dogs are good because it has a crunch on the outside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. So, did you make this in the toaster oven? Mm -hmm. Very so simple. Super straightforward. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. We got more texture. Check if you want a bite. That would be cool. These are so good. Um, yes, yeah, super Great simple preparation. Yes, yeah, simple preparation instructions. Um, and it's that vegan comfort food. So, like, this is, a, this is your health food, but it's perfect for watching the game. It's perfect to share with friends. Mm -hmm. It's perfect for a party. You when you want to take like, right? Oh, for sure. And yes, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So, um, well, let's talk about what field roast products also you can get. Um, so this corn dog is made with frankfurters, which is their vegan hot dog. So you can mm -hmm. actually just buy the frankfurter itself and cook it up at home as a separate hot dog. And they make sausages. Mm. They make these Italian flavored sausages, a Chipotle, which is pretty spicy, but yeah. it's really it's flavorful. They make um, apple sage. Mm. Um, they make breakfast sausages that are incredible. They make burgers. They make deli slices. So look out for this company, Field Roast. As I said, they're in Whole Foods and a lot of other stores in the D.C. area as well as across the country. We want to hear from you in the comments. Do you like Field Roast? Have you tried Field Roast products before? What's your favorite Field Roast product? Tell us. We need recommendations, because this is my first Field Roast product I've ever tasted as a corn dog, so I'm looking to expand my palate. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the, um, I think it's apple sage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My slices. Yeah. And I even chop them up a little bit to give salads a little kick. Mm. I use them in vegan omelets. Mm. I use them with a scrambled tofu. Wonderful. So I use them a lot. And mm. it's like a really nice go-to also for a quick sandwich. Yum. So that's mm. always in my, yummy. In my fridge. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> okay, so... We have a few friends of DC Veg Fest who are going to be stopping by soon. So we're going to take a little time to reset and we'll come back on air soon. So we'll see you back in a sec, okay? <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm not sure if this is working. Am I live from Los Angeles? You um, have to tell me. Yeah, okay, let me know. so we're back for just a sec. I want to let you know that coming up soon is going to be a wonderful cooking demo with Elizabeth Alfano at 2 p.m. So before we do that, we want to take some time here in the D.C. office to highlight some of our vendor friends for about five or so minutes, and then we'll be shooting over to Elizabeth Alfano, the host of Awesome Vegans Next. So we'll see you soon, Elizabeth. All right, look what we got. Ooh. Can I hand this over Ooh. to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Jonathan, can I ask you what's the status? Are we on mute? Are we on screen? We're going. We're going? Okay, great. Right. Once we got a few different flavors here, and JC? Yeah. You want to come up and tell us all about this? We've got, I have Embassy Spice here right in front of me, and POTUS, which is spicy hot chocolate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <That one. laughs> 
Let me just, yeah, let's, there we go. Let's see if we can talk about these. Talk about these, okay. I'm JC from Capital Kettle Corn and Lemonade Love. So we do two different things. We have two different companies. One, the Lemonade Love is run by my wife and my sister-in-law, E and Z. Thursday, Friday, and Saturdays, you can catch us at the White House Farmers Market and at the USDA. We do plant-based lemonades. We do ready-to-drink bottles, or we either do a frozen. Some of the flavors we've done is, uh, yesterday we did a um, um, mushroom lemonade frozen. We do beets. Anything the farmer sells from plant-based to uh, thyme, lemon, whatever it is, we do it. When it comes to the popcorn, as you can tell, Capital Kettle Corn, I am trying to export the name. <laughs> POTUS, 44. Spice is not what can I say? It was a favorite of the nature. I also do a FLOTUS 44 brown sugar. So I have to have the, I have to have the bookends. And some of the other flavors I do, I do MC Spice. It's a uh, Ethiopian blend I do called Better Bear. Most people never had it because they're eating Ethiopian food. Mm. But I bring it down a little because it's just a little sugar at the bottom so people can eat it. Mm -hmm. I also do my presidential, which is the uh, kettle corn, (laughs) and I have my cinnamon. Uh, I do a sea salt for those who don't like any kind of sugar. I do a lemon thyme. So we do a variety of flavors. We also have a veggie line that we're working on right now. Mm. So I would have had it all this weekend, but hey, (laughs) it'll come back again. So yeah, that's us. Yeah, well, we appreciate all of your support Not and your popcorn. Yes, yes. enjoy it. I want so everybody delicious. to enjoy it. So delicious. Thank you for coming. Thank you And very your much. website. CapitalKettleCorn.com and LemonadeLove.com. Here so check go. us out on Instagram and on the internet. Excellent. Like Thanks, so. Tell them BC Veg Fest sent you. Yes. Oh, and then, you got it. And we also <laughs> have uh, Carter Blue Capital is here. Hey. Hey, how's it going? Good. How's it going? Hi. How are you doing? Hello. <laughs> you want a corn dog? I, I'm, I'm good, good for now. You got your straw right here that you guys are giving out. So, yeah. You guys want to talk a little bit about your company? Great. Well, uh, thank you very much, Compassion Over Killing, for hosting this great event and pulling everyone together at the last minute under less than ideal uh circumstances. My name's Kyle Iwanek. I'm James Allen. And we're with Kerner Blue Capital. Uh, Carnival Blue Capital was born out of the idea that the way businesses manage their animal risk and exposure uh, is unsustainable. And we set about to change that along with our stakeholders in the NGO and nonprofit uh, field. So Carnival Blue operates in a field that's dubbed impact investing. And broadly speaking, impact investing is deploying assets, deploying capital for environmental and social good. Um, There's a subset of impact investing that's thematic investing, and you can think of that as investing in things like renewable energy or water resources, et cetera. So Carnival Capital is a thematic investor focused specifically on animal welfare, and that's where we see lots of opportunity. Um, Anyone from millennials to high net worth individuals is interested in deploying their capital to be used for good. There's a lot of difference and a lot of variations in how companies manage their risk and exposure to animal welfare. And we've set about through our proprietary company screening Mm -hmm. strategy uh, to do just that. So I'll hand it off to James right now to talk about how we do our research and how we do our screening. Yes. So in our first uh, iteration of our animal welfare product, we kind of looked at humans impact in three realms. Uh, Farm animals, where we kind of look at confined eating uh, spaces and transportation methods for livestock. Uh, research animals, we're looking at companies' alternative uh, research methods, as well as uh, biodiversity companies that kind of have mitigate risk uh, based on, uh, mitigate risk based on, oh, sorry, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, mitigate risk based on their environmental destruction. We kind of grade companies based on that through various KPIs and we identify industry leaders. Mm-hmm. And through that, we kind of have a pool of companies that have great animal welfare standards and develop a strategy based on that. We are actually currently in, uh, developing and in the final stages of development of a vegan strategy actually that has no animals in any of their animal operations. That should be out in like uh, early November. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, yeah, forward to that. exactly. Uh, so as James said, we screen companies within their industry uh, and we score them against their industry peers. So some float to the top, some sink to the bottom. Another part of 
our company's mission is to engage with those companies at the bottom to bring them up a couple of levels uh, to rise everybody to you know better animal welfare standards. So we're going to be engaging with companies uh, directly through proxy voting, through shareholder letters, um, in a couple different realms. First, we're looking at the food and beverage realm. We're looking at confined animal feeding operations, specifically gestation crates uh, for pigs. We're looking at um, battery cages for chickens. Uh, and we're also looking throughout the supply chain to engage with companies on a variety of other issues. Within the pharmaceutical realm uh, and also the chemicals realm, these companies are mandated legally to test on animals. So we're looking for transparency within their corporate supply chain and their animal testing chain. Uh, and we're also looking at companies that are actively devising alternative methods to animal testing so that they can phase out the use of animal testing. So we're, we're leaning on our NGO partners, we're leaning on uh, other nonprofits. We're also working with academic institutions to create this hub of innovation, create you know all of this content that hopefully investors can use and the general public can use to better inform uh, themselves on corporate animal welfare practices. Uh, well, we're so honored that you um, are a Celery Group sponsor Absolutely. this year of the DC Veg Fest, and I know you will be coming back in 2019. Yes. And it's a beautiful day. Absolutely. And um, how can people learn more about you? Where can they find you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so yeah, social? we could. Uh, we're on all of them: Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> go to uh, yeah, all the social media, yeah. and we could go to our website. It's Carner Blue Capital. K A R N E-R, blue, color, capital, dot com. Uh, please visit us. It, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Thank you. Yes, Very thank cool. you. Thank you. All. We appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks all right. So at this time, we're going to shoot over to Elizabeth Alfino, host of Awesome Vegans in her beautiful kitchen in California, where she's going to do a fall Brussels sprout salad cooking demo for us. So Elizabeth, take it over. Hi, everybody. Great to welcome you to Los Angeles. I'm in Venice. Hi, Erica. Hi, Jess. Great to see you. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Great to see you guys in uh, D.C. Thanks for everything you're doing. And I want to say that I'm going to get my hands, I don't know how, on that tote bag. So I got to get myself a tote bag. It sounds so awesome. And uh, you've had some incredible guests today. So I'm so glad you guys are doing this. And I'm glad to see that everybody's safe from the hurricane. Okay, they tell me I have about 20 minutes, so I'm gonna get down into it. I have a fall Brussels sprout salad, and it's super delicious, and it's so super fast. So as Jess was saying, I have my podcast, Awesome Vegans, but I also do a cooking demonstration every Wednesday right on Facebook Live. And the cooking demonstration is all about using things that I have in my fridge so that nothing goes bad and to show everybody just how easy vegan cooking is. So this is a perfect recipe that people love. It's super hearty and it's so easy. And I created it just because I didn't want my Brussels sprouts to go bad. So here we go. In California, it's still very warm. So the Brussels sprouts are very tiny. I got them at Whole Foods. Usually I would take a Brussels sprout and I would chop it into maybe four parts. But here I'm just, I've got it sliced into two and I'm gonna put them right into my cuisine art. Now I'll tell you a thing about cuisine art. If you don't have a gazillion dollars, which for the record I do not, uh, I just went to Amazon, thank you Amazon, and I got a refurbished one. And I think it was like 59 or 62 or something like this and very inexpensive and I've never had a problem with it. So I highly recommend refurbished cuisine art. Okay, so just plop them in the, the cuisine art. They're all kind of chopped and of course they're cleaned, my Brussels sprouts. And I should be ready to go here. Right on high. I love this cuisine art. Okay, that's enough. So the reason I do this, this is a raw Brussels sprout salad. And a lot of people say to me, well, how can you have Brussels sprouts? They're so bitter. But if you chop them really fine, thanks to your refurbished cuisine art, uh, it really cuts the bitter. And getting my handy dandy big stout bowl. Uh, it really cuts the bitter. And after all, Brussels sprouts are just a cabbage. So, you know, uh, it's a very easy kind of cabbage salad. Ultimately, this is a take on a cabbage salad a way to do something different than just coleslaw, which, you know, hey, coleslaw, I've been there, done that a gazillion times. Okay, so my next step, again, because it's what I had in my fridge when I originally created this recipe, is to take a can of garbanzo beans, which I love, 
And I'm just going to drain them right here in my handy dandy sink in Venice. Uh, so ingredient number two, garbanzo beans, making it super easy. Now, I don't know if you guys can see. This is what it looks like. So it's, uh, they're chopped pretty fine, which is great. Kerpow, I throw in my garbanzo beans. I try to drain them as best I can. Just give a toss here to make sure that that's a-okay. Now, here's the trick to the salad. Are you ready? Oh my word, things are just falling all over the place. Here is a trick to the salad. And I know that Jess has done some wonderful work. She's put in a recipe card in that tote bag that you all are gonna get your hands on, or I'm gonna get my hands on because it's just fabulous, everything that's in there. So there's a recipe card for this recipe. So if you're somebody who really wants to measure everything to the T, you've got it all there. But I think the benefit of this salad is really making it to your taste. How much salt? How much lemon? If you want lemon at all, it's not, it's not a must. And here's the trick. How much Dijon? So we talked about Brussels sprouts being strong and having a little bit of bitterness to them. And then we chop them super fine to get rid of that bitterness. But still, it's got a very hearty taste. So Dijon mustard stands up to Brussels sprouts, and that's the point. So I'm gonna make a vinaigrette, Dijon mustard, olive oil, um, red wine vinegar, but it's heavy on the Dijon. You see that huge scoop that I have of Dijon mustard. And then of, of course, I always cook to my taste, but you go ahead and cook to your taste. There's no one recipe here. So you can kind of take the ingredients and tweak them as you see fit. I go extra heavy on the Dijon. You don't have to if you don't want to. But I like to because Brussels sprouts really stand up to Dijon. So then I, uh, I don't want to overdo the oil. I try to keep that on a minimum because, you know, hey, if I can stay healthy, I want to. So I just do about a tablespoon of extra virgin, always extra virgin olive oil. Uh, but you can do more if you want it uh, heavier. And then I'll do, woo, I'll do um, about a tablespoon of red wine vinegar. And I'll put that into my, you can maybe see I'm starting to stir up here, into my uh, heavy Dijon vinaigrette. And then of course salt and pepper, cause hey, what the heck, I've got it around, some salt, some pepper. So I stir this up. I want you to see it as well. I'm gonna stir to your taste. So we've got red wine vinegar, extra virgin olive oil, heavy on the Dijon. And uh, this is all going to be on my website as well, elizabethalfano.com. Or, of course, get your hands on that great tote bag and get the recipe card right out of that bag. So now I'm going to dress the salad. And it's really creamy. It's because I went so heavy on the Dijon, which is great. Really creamy. I love the salad because there's just so very few ingredients, and yet it's so tasty. So I'm getting this all in here. Again, I try to not overdress my salad because I don't want too many calories for, from the oil. But if you like yours really moist with dressing, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, getting every last bit of dressing there. So now I'll kind of toss it, see how we do. Oh, good. Okay, and then I'll taste it, and if I feel like it needs more dressing, I'll go ahead and do that. So again, this is all about cooking to your taste and making sure you use what you have in the fridge. That's why when I do my Wednesday Facebook Live cooking demonstrations, I call myself the accidental vegan chef because I'm always making recipes right out of what's left in the fridge. So I don't want anything to go bad, and I don't want to waste any food. Now it comes to... The bottom line, what always makes a recipe good? It probably has something to do with follow your heart. So I love follow your heart. Here's follow your heart Parmesan. I love follow your heart. It always rounds out any dish, particularly the Parmesan. I think that's one of their best products, but of course I rely on vegan A's all the time. So uh, I love follow your heart. Here's some Parmesan. I'm putting it in. Yeah, that'll do it. So I did, I did just about 40%, maybe 50% in the end of the uh, container of Follow Your Heart. And I'm going to mix this as well. And I'm going to show it to you. Oh, yummy. I'm going to show it to you guys in just a second so you can see what it looks like. Now, if you're somebody who likes yours with a kick, we did have red wine vinegar in here. 
but you can always add lemon if you'd like to do that. Uh, you can just squeeze on some extra fresh lemon and that's always a nice addition. So I'm gonna show you guys what we've got. Big, hearty, colorful, green salad. So very few ingredients. I think I made this thing, how long have I been live now? I think I made this thing in like seven minutes. Um, just cleaned my Brussels sprouts, chopped them, threw them in the cuisine art, added some garbanzo beans, did a heavy Dijon vinaigrette, threw in some follow your heart Parmesan, salt and pepper, maybe lemon, boom! Feeds lots of people, men love it, it's super heavy salad, and it's tasty. So hold on, just to prove how tasty this is. All right, people. Mmm. 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 A couple more tricks to this salad. Mm. It's great in fall when Brussels sprouts are really in season. So that always makes a big difference, right? You want to use your best ingredients possible. And then I really like to let the dressing sit for a while. Remember we said that Brussels sprouts are strong. They have a strong taste. They even sometimes have a little bit of bitterness with them. So because they're so strong, you can let the dressing sit there and they're not gonna wilt because it's not lettuce, but you'll really infuse the flavor of the Dijon because Brussels sprouts and Dijon are just pals. They get along. You can infuse that flavor into the salad and you'll find that you'll get even a better taste if you let it sit, you know, with, with maybe saran wrap on top in the fridge, let it sit for about an hour before you serve it. You don't have to, but you'll just find that the taste infuses even more. So, okay, um, you should have this recipe in your tote bag. And of course, you can always go to elizabethalfano.com for the recipe there. And you can find me every Wednesday on Facebook live doing cook cooking demos live just like today. Or you can listen to my podcast, Awesome Vegans, which I do every other week. And Jess was on my podcast as well. So her podcast is actually the most <laughs> So you can always go to elizabethalfano.com. I think I'm going to turn you guys back. Okay, you're good. On screen. DC. So glad that you are all safe. Thank you, everybody at Compassion Overcook. On Healing screen, here, here. All you do for that tote bag, but also all you do for animals. Sorry. Really very seriously, thank you. Compassion over killing. Oh, you you there. Um, I know that there's a Q&A section to this. I'm not sure if somebody's going to read me the questions so or if I'm supposed to find them on my screen. But you all can tell me. Uh, or you can hit me up because I'm not sure how the video is working. You can always hit me up personally. You can find me on Instagram at Elizabeth Alfano. You can find me on Facebook at Elizabeth Alfano. Or you can email me because I just love to talk to people. So Elizabeth which is spelled funny, E-L-Y-S-A-B-E-T-H, at awesomevegans.com. Or I can take questions now, whatever anybody wants. I see Jess Now, thank her. Ready. Bye. Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you so much for that wonderful cooking demo. Um, you can see all about Elizabeth's recipes on elizabethalfano.com, and you can find her Brussels sprouts fall salad recipe on tryveg.com next week. So I just wanted to come on camera to let you know once again that we are giving away a wonderful air fryer. And all you have to do to win is comment why you love DC Veg Fest, and we will be selecting a winner at random next week. You also have a chance to win some DC Veg Fest shirts. Jess is going to show you what they're looking like. And you can just put uh, another reason why you love DC Veg Fest, but use hashtag DC Veg Fest shirt for a chance to win a shirt. We'll be giving out 20 shirts, so you have 20 chances to win. And um, yeah. And Jess, they can also win a COK shirt as well. Yes. So in your comment, you can say whether you want a DC Veg Fest shirt or a COK shirt. Once again, saying why you love DC Veg Fest and use the hashtag DC Veg Fest shirt. So Jess is here again, and she's going to share a little bit more of some supporter shout outs. So Jess, take it away. Yeah, thanks, Jess. Um, yeah, we want to, again, take this time to reflect and thank our supporters that are sending so much love to us in this 
time that we're um, that we're having right now. So the first person that I want to go ahead and share their comment is from Rebecca. And Rebecca says, you know, she's really sorry, um, exclamation point, you know, that it's canceled. She says, I have some idea of how much work goes into putting together a festival and can only imagine the devastation that goes on. But she says, thank you so much to everyone for all that we're doing. And she does want to point out that the public, sadly, isn't going to enjoy this great event, but DC is lucky to have compassion over killing um, as a team in the city here in DC. So thank you, Rebecca, for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next, um, I want to go ahead and share something from one of our fantastic interns, Erica, here. She was so sweet, right? When we had, you know, when all of this had to be made, um, she reached out to us right away. And uh, yeah, and you may or may not have seen her earlier today as the dancing cow. So Kalrina. yeah, Kalrina, yes. <laughs> And Erica reached out to us and just said, you know, I just heard the news. I just want to say that I'm grateful that I have gotten the opportunity to see what goes into creating this amazing event. And she's so inspired and proud of everyone here at COK for working their butts off every day to make DC Veg Fest the best festival ever. And she's definitely looking forward to next year. So thank you, thank you so much, Erica, for that. And just a couple more here. There was this one's kind of funny here. And I'm not sure who this one, but they, who this is from, but it says, they're just gonna lick the screen in hopes for the flavor. <laughs> so come and tell me if you're licking the screen or have licked the screen so far during the podcast. <laughs> yeah, and she get, and she commends us for uh, pushing through all this. Yeah, also, thank you. And then um, our last one is from Jennifer Demaria, and she says um, she can relate. She's a, a vegan business owner who has lived through Irma last year, mm. with it, which did take unfortunately her house and her vegan business is still closed. And she said, she just wants to say how sorry she is, not to just us, but to also the vendors and the attendees. Um, and that she knows and she appreciates the fact that nothing, and she means nothing, is more important than the safety of all of us and the animals and so forth. So thank you so much, Jennifer, for those kind words on that. And we hope everything is gonna get better for you as well. But lots of love still yeah. coming through. Thank you so much to all of our supporters and everyone. Um, and I hope you're enjoying our event today. Thank you so much. And now I want to introduce Carissa Marks, who is our outreach manager. And she was the, you know, the, the woman power behind bringing this event together. She joined us this year. And so now she's going to take a little bit of time to talk about, you know, some of the events that you would find in the kids zone, some of our upcoming initiatives that you can see from our outreach department this coming year, as well as uh, introduce our next host or guest. So Take it away, Carissa. I'm outreach manager with Compassion Over Killing. Um, I just wanted to tell you about some of the events that we were going to have in the kids zone this year. We're super bummed that uh, the whole event wasn't able to happen, but we are bringing you um, at least one speaker from the kids zone. This is Liam Marks, and he's going to do a little puppet show in a few minutes. Uh, he's my son. Uh, we also want to give a shout out to EYL 365, uh, which is a group local to DC, who is going to be doing some um, art pro projects in the, in the kids zone with some kids. Um, we also had a musician, Norm Hoagland, um, who's going to do some music with Norm. We had um, uh, Tambra Ray Stevenson with I Am Wanda. Um, she does a lot of great work in, the, in our community, uh, empowering girls and women to get involved in their local food systems. Uh, we were going to have story time with Cindy Daigle, who's a longtime volunteer, and she's wonderful. So. Shout out to her. Um, one of, another uh, cooking demo that we were going to have was with the Joyful Food Market with Chef Rob. They're with Martha's Table. And uh, for anyone watching, if you're unfamiliar, uh, they uh, basically run markets around the Ward 7 and 8 in Washington, D.C., and they, they uh, serve a lot of communities in our area. So thanks to the Joyful Food Market. Check them out. Um, Eric Lindstrom, who is our marketing director, was going to be doing some cartooning, and I think that we'll still hear from him later. So we look forward to that. Um, Helena Warren was going to be doing some yoga in the kids zone. She was coming all the way from Philadelphia. So thank you to Helena and hopefully we can work with her again next year. Um, our data analyst Elena was going to be doing some henna in the kids zone. Uh, so thank you to Elena. And also she has a henna business. So if anyone is interested, we can share that information. Um, and you can kind of get henna done if you're local anytime. Um, and like I said, we have Liam coming up and Simone DeLima, who is our director of outreach and education, was also going to be doing some story time in the kids zone. Uh, you heard from her with Valenci earlier about adoptable pets. So thank you to Simone. Um, so now basically I'm going to uh, just introduce Liam. He is 13 years old. 
and he has been vegetarian his whole life and recently became vegan. So his friend is going to be telling us about Liam's story. All right, All right take the stage. <laughs> Hello, hello everybody. Leo and I used to be vegetarian, which means that he would occasionally eat food with milk and eggs in it. Milk and eggs came from the animals, so Liam and I decided we didn't want to eat those foods anymore. Because Liam wants baby cows and chickens to stay with their moms and be safe. Now, Liam is a vegetarian, which means that he doesn't eat any foods that come from the animals. Animals are our friends, and we need to be kind to our friends and take care of them. We want everyone to be kind to the animals. Just remember to treat the animals like you would treat me. Hmm. Would you treat me nicely? If that's true, that's how we should treat animals too. Think of a puppy, a kitten, a hamster, a piggy, a cow, or a sheep. All of these animal friends are deserving of love and kindness. I love all animals, so I don't eat them. My favorite food is veggie burgers. Veggie burgers can be made out of lots of different plants, but I love veggie burgers made of black beans. Veggie burgers taste good and are full of protein. The best part is that they aren't meat. Thank you, my friends, for listening to yours truly. <laughs> Thank you, Liam and Liam's puppet friend. Thank you for sharing your story and Liam's story. And up next, we're going to have Eric Lindstrom joining us from New York to teach us all about uh, vegan cartooning, animal cartooning, as well as vegan parenting. So we're going to get things settled and transitioned, and we'll see Eric soon. Hi. We, got a, we have a, a broadcast going here at Cornell University. I'm here at a potluck with the Cornell Students for Animal Rights. Let's hear it for animals! Let's hear it for veganism. I hope I'm live. I can't tell. Can someone look at the screen and behind the phone and tell me if I'm live? Uh, thank you for being here. As everyone before me has said, DC Veg Fest unfortunately was canceled because of the non-hurricane Florence. I was going to be in the kid zone teaching cartooning to kids and talking about my new book, The Smart Parent's Guide to Raising Vegan Kids, which is right here. Uh, the follow-up to The Skeptical Vegan, which is right here. So. Again, I'm really happy to be here today as part of the Cornell Students for Animal Rights Potluck and to be able to do a live broadcast uh, for DC Veg Fest's virtual event. Woo! Yeah! Woo! yeah. Woo! And everybody here is kind of like a little bit freaking out because there's this meta thing happening where we're watching it on a huge screen, but it's a minute in the past. <laughs> so I want that Eric to tell this Eric the lottery numbers for tonight. <laughs> Nothing? All right, so anyway, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I do want to give away a copy of the Smart Parents Guide to Raising Vegan Kids today. So the first person commenting who says they want the book, who doesn't work for Compassion Over Killing, uh, gets the book. So I'll check out the feed later to see who's going to get that copy of the Smart Parents Guide to Raising Vegan Kids. And at the end of my broadcast, which by the way, I'm not sure how I'm going to time this either, I'm going to turn the camera around on these folks because how lucky are we that there is the Cornell Students for Animal Rights group here today, but there's also the Cornell Vegan Society. So I live in a, oh, and here's one of my vegan kids. And it's Cooper. Okay, I'll get lost. So I'm going to be drawing cartoons. You want to learn how to draw some cartoons, Cooper? Yeah, yeah. All right, what do you want to draw that's a farm animal? Puppy. Ow. I didn't have a puppy on my cheat sheet. How about a chicken? All right, so as I was going piggy to do, cow, piggy cow. I'll do a chicken. Um, <laughs> as I was going to do at the uh, Veg Fest Kid Zone tent, is I teach cartooning to small kids like Cooper on up to you know sort of tween aged, and I love to tell people that no matter what, you can draw cartoons if you can draw three shapes, and those three shapes are circle, square, and triangle. And no, 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 no. no? <laughs> and, okay, I was, thank you, Paisley. Paisley's in the background. That's my other vegan kid. Um, and there are variations. So a circle can become an oval, a square can become a rectangle, and a triangle can become a diamond or any other variation of a three-sided shape, three or four-sided shape. So here comes Paisley. Can I like this? Yes, please. Here's the other one. 
Isn't she adorable? <laughs> Don't you want vegan kids? You can have them whenever you want them. <laughs> All right, so let's draw a quick chicken. So as I said, no, I want, I want the let's draw a cow. No, let's draw a chicken. <laughs> okay, so let's uh, get going. So as I said, with three shapes, you can draw anything in the world as long as you're expecting it to be a cartoon. Daddy. Because a cartoon is a super uber simplified version of something else. Yes, Hazel. Okay, one second. I'm kind of doing something. So we start with one circle and draw another circle. Now that's pretty easy, right? So from there, we can add little things like... I really know like how to make a bat claw. Those things on top of a chicken's head. Are a little diamond shape, which is one of the promised shapes. Uh, I'm I'm and oh. you can add a little thing under here, a couple of eyes, smile. Come over here, add a tail. Do you like the way cartoonists just jump ahead to all of the things that I didn't say you had to do? And here's our wing. And so down here we get the chicken feet. And what's that, Paisley? Chicken. That's right, but you're not Paisley. So that's one of the animals you can draw with all of those simple shapes. It's not what you want to hear. See? Cow. Cow. All right, let's draw a cow. Circle. I want to draw my chicken. Circle. Circle. If you can draw those three circles, you can draw a cow. Daddy. Yeah. No, I have I a big I I know, Paisley. I can't accommodate you right now. I'm kind of busy. So with this uh, arrangement of circles, you can see how very easily we can go back in here, add some of the details. Each one of these, by the way, is also a circle. <coughs> A uh, triangle or a rectangle. <laughs> and that's Kimchi. <laughs> Our vegan dog. And Kimchi is a. And. Give the cow some. Big boobs. Kitty little legs. And boobs? No, no boobs for the cow. And. I no, I'm letting you to draw. <laughs> so, as you can see, this is a very super simplified cartoony cow. Give uh, it some udders. Which of course is for <laughs> baby cows, not for people. Hey. And then you have your cow. You can give it a little bit of grass to chew on. So as you evolve as the cartoonist, you can go back in, and what you do is remove the lines Daddy. that you no longer need as part of the drawing. And there you go. Daddy, so that's a cow. Yes. I, let's go. Let's draw a piggy. All right. Let's draw a pig. And Daddy, I love pigs. And pigs are a whole bunch of circles. I, I, I want you to draw a sheep. A sheep. Let's try the pig first. Okay, so <laughs> we have a circle, 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 circle. You with me so far? All circles? Oval, oval, circle, circle. You can see again where this is headed, right? That's a big that's circle for the body, big, and a bunch of circles down here for where we're going to end up putting the legs and the hooves. Uh, so what the pig needs now are ears and a tail. So the ears, again, you simplify by saying that they're uh, simple triangles. It looks you... like a kitty cat. Yes, thank you, Paisley, for being a <laughs> critic of my art. <laughs> really appreciate that. So here we go. Get down it here. Looks like a butt. <laughs> uh -huh. It looks like a penis. This is, this is only going on the internet to millions of people around the world, showing off my child's vocabulary. So, here we go, little pig, it looks like put in a some, penis. some mud. No, no, it's it's it, 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 it looks like a butt. Okay. Daddy, can, yes. can you draw, can you draw a baby pig? A baby pig? Sure, that's a great idea, Cooper. And so can you draw a big soul? Then draw a daddy pig that's so fat. That and daddy, and, yeah, and okay, daddy. you know, actually, Mike shut us off, you guys. So you may want to just. Daddy. Yeah. And that's daddy. a floating baby pig. Because they're very light. They just they elevate. So. And daddy. Yes. And daddy, you can. Let's try a duck. Let's daddy, try a duck. Okay, let's try a duck. So a duck, we've got circle, duck. circle, and. 
couple of triangles. Now we'll go in and put another diamond in here. My duck is somewhat reminiscent of a penguin, but I guess because they're related. Cooper, do you like the, uh, the duck that you requested? Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, yeah. so that's a, a duckling. That's my duck. Uh, so, <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed learning how to draw farm animals today. Uh, I have no idea how long that took. Was it five minutes? Um, so, if uh, the HQ could let me know that we're stepping away from my segment, or as I again grab the camera and put all of these young people on the spot. Yes. Get ready. And here we go. Yes. So something that they've done here uh, every time we've come to one of their potlucks is they put a uh, I'm vegan because on the chalkboard and then they hold a whiteboard that Cooper's writing on right here to say why they're vegan. And so it's a really nice uh, way to tell everyone why they're vegan, what the reason is they went vegan, why they're staying vegan, and how wonderful is it that there's this many young vegan people coming together on a Saturday for a potluck. So again, give it up for the Cornell Students for Animal Rights and the Compassion Over Killing and to DC Veg Fest's virtual event. Thank you so much, all of you. Uh, what a great day. It's unbelievable that we've pulled this together. Congratulations and thank you so much. All right, thank you so much, Eric. That was incredibly entertaining, and it looked like you were all having a lot of fun. Um, so I appreciate that cartooning, and um, people can also find out more about you. You are the Director of Marketing at Compassion Over Killing, based in Ithaca, and they can also check out your website, skepticalvegan.com, um, to check out your new books. So um, next up, I'm so delighted that we are able to bring remotely to you our next guest, who is Dr. Neil Bernard. He's not ready yet. So okay, and uh, Dr. Neil Bernard, he is based in the DC area. Um, some of you may already be familiar with him. He is the founder and the president of Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. They're based here in the DC area and they do a lot of work to promote, um, they work on, the work that they do is promoting vegan eating from a health perspective, which this book, this is one of his many books. I wanted to show you this one. This is about reversing diabetes. And they also do a lot of work on animal testing in the medical community, trying to eliminate the need for animal testing and the reliance on animal testing in that community. And um, a couple of years ago, the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine under Neil's leadership and guidance also started the Barnard Medical Center. So this is a full medical center based in the DC area that is focused on nutrition as well as medical health. So it, the, the, a lot of the focus on the issues that the, some of the illnesses or diseases people are experiencing can be addressed through food, which is a lot of what this book talks about with reversing diabetes. And so the Barnard Medical Center focuses on not just how to address and help heal people, but how to prevent some of those common ailments, including diabetes, and heart disease um, and other illnesses like that. So he is gonna be up in just a minute and I think right now we're gonna bring Jessica up and Jessica's gonna share more of our supporter feedback. Thanks Erica. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, um, <laughs> because we keep getting so many uh, great notices and emails from everybody, we wanna take this opportunity now to share a little bit more because what another great way then to make us all keep feeling better about all of this. So um, let's see, the first one that I can share is from Reggie Adams, and they're saying, you are just amazing and fantastic. You know, they can't imagine how diff difficult it is, but um, they know that it's a great event and they look forward to being able to attend next year because next year we will have better weather. We know it. 
Knock on wood, right? <laughs> um, our friends at the Utah Animal Rights Coalition, they wrote to us and they said, you know, we're so heartbroken for your entire planning team. Um, we know how much time and energy and love you all have put into this uh, event to make it so amazing. But this is obviously, you know, out of our control. You know, we can't control the weather, unfortunately. Um, but they say stay safe and they look forward to next year. So thank you, friends, there. Um, we got some love from one of the planners for the Lancaster um, Veg Fest because, as you know, you know, they've, they've done an event like this, but they know the type of work that um, goes into it. So they can really relate to it. And, and um, that is from Courtney Kokas. And she says, you know, I'm so sorry. She plans a Lancaster Veg Fest. She understands and she can feel the pain with us. Um, and what we really appreciate is she's even extending saying, how can she help? So thank you so much, Courtney. That really means a lot. We know that you can relate to us on that. Yeah, and can I also just mention really quickly, so a lot of the Veg Fest organizers mm -hmm. who we work with routinely just sharing ideas and feedback, they've been really supportive to us. And one of them is also the New Jersey Veg Fest. It's coming up October 6th and 7th in New Jersey. And they have extended an offer to our vendors who were unable to be on site because of the state of emergency um, forcing us to cancel this event. They're extending an offer for those vendors who couldn't be with us today to exhibit for free at the New Jersey Veg Fest. So uh, check that site. I think it's NewJerseyVegFest.com yeah. is their website. So check that out. And we'll also be sharing some of that on social media as well. Yeah. Um, and, we're, and we're so happy that they're able to yeah. do something like that. Um, let's see, we have Brother Wolf Sanctuary out in North Carolina, um, and they just, they're just sent, sending messages saying that they understand, um, you know, you can't predict the weather, um, and again, they're looking forward to next year, so we're hoping, uh, where you're at in North Carolina, also that you're staying safe as well, and you're not being affected, um, and everybody there is going to be safe, so, uh, let's see, and Erica and COK team. So sorry about the weather, um, you know, again, as it hasn't been predicted, um, they just, they're just really excited that we were able to have an alternative plan mm -hmm. um, and that they're able to, to see this happening today. And I just want to say, I, this is fantastic that we've had the ability to do this fun event that we, as a team, have planned this in such short notice. Yeah. And what a fun day it's been. Yeah. <laughs> because this is the first time to do something like this. Yeah. And you just didn't know what was going to happen. But yeah. this is really great. And we're kind of winging it. Like we're, yeah. uh, we're learning a lot about broadcasting live. Right. <laughs> and um, it's been a lot of fun. And we're so, uh, again, we're just so happy that so many of our um, speakers and sponsors could join us virtually, um, even though, you know, they couldn't be here with us today. So, and we have Stuart is here. Yeah, great. All right. Come on over, Come Stuart. Right. Can I switch seats with you? Absolutely. Yeah. So we are just waiting on Dr. Neil Bernard to come on so that you can listen to him speak for a little bit. Uh, so in the meantime, I wanted to share the tote bag information for anybody who may not been, have been on the live stream earlier today. Um, so what we're doing is we still have a thousand of these DC VegFest tote bags. Let me set it up so you can see what it looks like real quick. Uh, we've already gone through it in the live stream today. So most of you probably already know kind of what's in here, but I'll show you a few key things. Um, but I wanted to let you know that we are actually heading over to the Bus Boys and Poets in Tacoma Park right now. It is about, what time is it? It is 2.35. So at exactly 3 o'clock, we will be there ready to give out about 40 tote bags. Um, and we're going to be doing that all throughout the week. We have a bunch of secret locations that are all vendors who are going to be at VegFest today. So in, an, in a way to support them, we're going to be popping up with short notice every day. So you've got to turn on your notifications. You've got to follow us on all our social media. We've got Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at DC Veg Fest. And periodically throughout the week, we'll give you about an hour's notice and tell you where we're going to be that day. So there are going to be restaurants, there are going to be bakeries, there's all kinds of places to get really good vegan food. Uh, now, you're not required to buy anything to come and get your tote bag. You can just grab a tote bag, but we do want to support our vendors because they weren't able to be with us today. Um, so we encourage you to have a meal, try a snack, get a cookie or a cupcake or something delicious. Um, so we're really excited to do that. We're excited to see you all get a chance to interact with you so you can actually come out and talk to us and grab your awesome tote bag and support our vendors. 
So we will be all around. We'll let you know where we're going to be. But today, right now, we are heading to Tacoma Park's Busboys and Poets, and we're super excited about that. Um, so for anyone who missed it before, I'm going to show you just a couple of things that are in the tote bag. We have Bob's Red Milk Chocolate Protein Powder. There's also vanilla. You get one or the other. We've got an entire box of Daya mac and cheese. This is one of my favorite parts of this. Uh, we've got all kinds of coupons. We've got granola. There's actually even headphones from Main Street Vegan, the podcast. Um, so those are pretty cool. There's all kinds of stuff in here. So we're heading over there now. We'll see you at Bus Boys and Poets in Tacoma Park very soon. Yeah, and right now we're also, so we're gonna be bringing back Karina for a few minutes while we set up. We, uh, uh, Dr. Neil Bernard is gonna be joining us a little bit later. We are gonna um, soon switch over to Jessica Carter, who is our vegan food lifestyle coach for a cooking demo. But before that, we have a special treat. Come on in, Karina. I like almonds, I like hemp, I like cashew, I like oak. I'm drinking macadamia and I'm even trying to I like cocoa, cocoa, nut, peanut milk, plums, and chocolate. You're not a baby cow, so please make this bow. Try plant milk and you'll see. We don't need no dairy. I like food and all is strong. Yeah, just listen to this song. They call me vegan, vegan, spicy cow. Please don't take my milk right now. I need it for my baby cow. Turn a vegan, vegan, vegan now. How about this cheese? We open please. Sales, go over the roof. Follow your heart and try this man. Say yes, please. How much for the cheese? Cows were sickly impregnated. Artificially inseminated. Babies taken away from the mothers. The cheese are stuck to their udders. Now, yeah, babies are killed for real. The best are milk for us to steal.
Hey, everybody, let's hear it for Karina in the comments. Who loves their plant milk? Me, I do, I do. <laughs> so I'm here today to bring you a very simple but super delicious recipe for Reuben quesadillas. So these Reuben quesadillas come together in a matter of minutes, and they feature one of my favorite vegan burgers, the Sunshine Burger. So this is the barbecue sunshine burger and the ingredients are super clean it's very low process so it just comes with uh, brown rice sunflower seeds pinto beans um rice syrup paprika garlic and black pepper so it's a very simple burger recipe here i love the flavor and the texture and they taste delicious in these reuben quesadillas so what i'm going to start off by doing is making sure my skillet is hot now if i were at home i would probably cook the burgers in um in the oven, just because I find that it makes them a little bit crispier, but you can make them come together very quickly on the stove top as well. So each box comes with three burgers. So this is two boxes worth of burgers that I'm gonna be heating up on our skillet here. And the goal is really to just heat the burgers through, make sure they're not frozen anymore because these burgers are found in the freezer section. And then, um, yeah, you just wanna cook them through because they're going to become the main base for our quesadillas. So, We'll get these going and our skillet is turned all the way up on high. So the next component that is common in a Reuben is the Russian dressing. So I looked around, I didn't find any vegan Russian dressings. You oftentimes don't really see Russian dressing in the grocery store. So I'm using follow your heart tartar sauce and some French dressing. I'm gonna mix these together to make our dressing for our sandwich slash quesadilla. So not all French dressings are vegan. Lots of brands that I saw in the grocery store had milk in them. So you need to make sure that you read the labels to make sure that there's no milk in your French dressing, okay? So this is super simple as well. All you wanna do is combine equal parts tartar sauce and French dressing and mix well. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna do pretty generous portion because we have six burgers in the griddle and we have a, a hungry team in the background. So we wanna make sure everybody is well fed, so. I just eyeball it, but like I said, equal parts. So if you wanna do like a quesadilla for one, just one burger, then maybe use one tablespoon of tartar sauce and one tablespoon of French dressing, and that's all you need. So I'm gonna start there and then mix well. And this dressing is nice because, you know, it has some relish, it has garlic, it has onion in the tartar sauce and then it has sweetness from the french dressing so it's a nice tangy sweet mixture that combines super nicely with this barbecue flavored burger so making your dressing is just that simple i told you this was easy i hope you believe me because i wouldn't lie to you okay so we're going to give our burgers a flip they're coming along nicely so i did actually get to get these started in the toaster oven so we won't have to leave these on for a super long time. But if you're following the package instructions, it says that you wanna heat these up on the stove top for three to five minutes on each side. And if you're gonna do it in the oven, you wanna preheat your oven to 375 degrees and then cook it for five to seven minutes. So these burgers cook up super quickly and they're already fully cooked when you get them, they're just frozen. So when you're cooking these burgers in the oven or on the stove top, you're just toasting the outside a bit and heating them through evenly, but that's all there is to it. So I'm gonna let these go a bit longer. And while I do, I'll tell you about the rest of the products that we're using in these quesadillas. So first up, we're gonna be using slices of the smoked Gouda by Follow Your Heart. This cheese is delicious. This is my favorite vegan sliced cheese. It's affordable, you can find it a lot of places. I like the flavor and the texture a whole, whole lot. So if you see me buying slices of vegan cheese, more than likely this is gonna be the one you'll see me with. And then we have these street tacos, which are just mini flour tortillas. And I love these because they're just about the size of a burger. So even small tortillas are usually too big. So, I mean, you could alter this recipe and use a larger tortilla and fold it over, but the minis are great. So we're just gonna use two of these and sandwich our burger and our sauce and our cheese in between those. And then the last key component of a Reuben is of course the sauerkraut. It is a fermented cabbage, so it's tangy, it's crunchy, it's fibrous, and it balances out the sweetness of the um, of the Russian dressing and you know the savory flavor of our burger. So all together, it comes together very, very nicely. 
So now what I'm going to do is take our burgers off because I need to make space for our tor tortillas. So if you're doing this in a nonstick pan, you really don't need to add any oil. Even if you're not doing it in a nonstick pan, I don't find that um, flour tortillas really stick to anything. So like you can really get away with making this recipe without any added oil. I personally find that you just don't need the added oil when you're cooking. I think we're taught to use oil when we cook and it does add flavor, but there are plenty of ways to incorporate flavor. Like Danny was saying, spices help to add flavor. You don't need to add oil to get flavor in your food. So we're gonna skip it. There's some oil in these products, you know, before we get our hands on them, but we don't need to add extra. So I'm gonna, I had six burgers. So I'm gonna put down six tortillas. And then after I get these tortillas down, I'm going to add in a slice of cheese on each. And we want to do it like this because we want the cheese to be closest to the heat source so that it starts to melt for us. Okay, so next up, I'm going to add about, I, I would say a generous tablespoon of this sauerkraut. And I like to do this on top of the cheese because once again, the cheese can kind of act like an adhesive once it starts to melt, so it brings it all together. So if you get stuck on your fork, don't worry about it. If you get a little sauerkraut on the skillet, honestly, I kind of like it because it starts to get browned a little bit and it's really, really good. So it brings out flavors you didn't know you needed. I've never heard of anyone sauteing sauerkraut before, but it's like an accidental thing you discover, it's delicious. Okay, here we go. Who likes sauerkraut out there in the comments? What do you like to eat it on? Tell me your sauerkraut secrets, because honestly, I don't eat a lot of sauerkraut outside of this recipe. But after I ate it, it was a food I assumed I didn't like, but I had it in this recipe, and I was like, this is really good. How can I use this in other recipes? So tell me your sauerkraut secrets, your sauerkraut tips, specialties in the comments, so I know what to do with all the sauerkraut I'm going to have left over after this cooking demo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's getting warm in here. That's how I know the skill is getting hot. Here we go, here we go. And I don't know if you can hear it, but the sizzle is starting in the skillet. So I know it's nice and hot. That makes me feel happy. And actually the cheese is already starting to melt. So don't be afraid to crank up the heat. This is a meal that does not need to take long because everything you're cooking is already cooked through. So you're just really trying to heat and add texture to what you're making. So next up is gonna be our burger. And actually I'm gonna ask for some help in the room. Can someone grab me a spatula? Thank you so much. Because we can't do these live cooking demos alone. I mean, you could, but it wouldn't go as smoothly if you didn't have a team of people with you. And it's not as fun either. Because who are you going to eat all this food with? I mean, <laughs> I guess you could eat it alone. I mean, it's more fun to share food with people, though. That's what I think. So now we're going to do a generous dollop of our dressing right on top. Thank you so much. And I'll set this here. Dollop each of these. I hope you can see what this looks like. It's starting to smell really good in here. Next step in technology that Facebook needs to get on is smell vision They say internet is the future TV or the future of TV. They can totally take over if they get to smell vision first, I think. Oh, also, and remember I asked you before, if anybody's out there looking at the screen when they're watching these demos, put a tongue in the comments. <laughs> okay. So these, these uh, tortillas are not something I had seen on the market before, but you know, street tacos have become a lot more popular. So I actually found them very easily, um, you know, on the end of the, of the like Mexican food aisle, where they usually have like lots of different types of flour tortillas. They have the really big fajita tortillas. I found these, they were kind of tucked behind some stuff, but they were there. So keep your eye out. They are probably there for you. Um, more than likely, they'll have them at your major grocery stores. I got these from Giant, and they're about $1.99 for 12 tortillas, so not a bad price. So you can see I got some good color on this tortilla, nice and brown, and it's crisp, too. Okay. 
Okay. It goes really quick. So I'm not looking at a clock as I go, but I feel like I'm maybe 10 minutes into this recipe, maybe. So it comes together super, super fast. So this is great for a weeknight meal. I think it's kid friendly. I think it's good for like, I don't know if you're having people over to like watch a game. People watch games in the fall, I hear. I don't watch any games, but if you watch games, <laughs> maybe you want to eat this while you do that. Um, and actually travels really nicely because it's a sandwich or sandwich style quesadilla. Like it's, it's pretty easy to take on the go once it's all prepared. So you can wrap this in foil. It's good the next day. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience. Yeah, so we're toasting it up and we're almost done. Oh, watch out, it's starting to pop in here. So um, I'm gonna ask for another hand if I can get a knife to slice these with because we'll be coming off the stove with these in just a few minutes. And I wanna invite some of my friends who are here in the office up to sample the goodness. I mean, I hope that this cooking demo was inspo for you because it came together so, so simply. Um, and just like the other recipes you've seen today, you'll be able to find them on tryveg.com slash recipes. The recipes there are simple. Ooh, they're comforting. They're delicious. Ooh, it's popping over here. Thank you. Oh, yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah. So if it starts to get too hot, adjust your heat. Um, but yeah, no, the recipes are simple and delicious. You know, I try to think of foods that are relatable to the things that we love that we ate maybe before we went vegan. There's something comforting about familiarity, but you can also go beyond your borders. Like if you, once you get comfortable making the foods that you're familiar with, you can stretch out and try some new things. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, so no, there's no problem with starting with what you know, but feel creative, feel emboldened to try new things as well. And um, so the recipes are, are a nice balance between comforting foods and experimental new foods, but they're always simple to prepare. They're always using easy to find ingredients. Um, and they're always delicious because I work with my friends here in the office to give me honest feedback and they love it. So I'm gonna pull these off and start slicing them up and then I'll invite some folks up to give it a taste. Just a second. Okay, so, so they do slice a little bit easier. They stay more intact when you're cutting them if you let them to sit, allow them to sit um, and come down in temperature for maybe like five minutes before you cut into them. But there's nothing like food hot off the skillet. All right. And it's not the cleanest food, but it's worth it. Sometimes when you got a little food on your shirt, a little food on the corner of your mouth. If it tastes good, it's worth it, right? So here we go. If anybody wants to come on up and give it a sample, please come, please come. I'm going to grab one. Anybody else? Definitely. Come on up. Okay. Let's get to try everything. Today. Exactly. They yeah. smell really good, mm. Jess. Mm. 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 <laughs> so they're terrible. <laughs> Horrible. It was just so good. Oh. Let everyone get in there. Ooh. I like my finger and already like that. <laughs> Yep, this sauce is so oh, good. So good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, remind us again what you mm -hmm. sauce. Come on in. The sauce was just follow your heart tartar mm -hmm. sauce and French dressing. Mm -hmm. If you don't have tartar sauce, you can use veggie nays, add some sweet relish to it, and then a little bit of garlic and onion powder <laughs> to make your own tartar sauce at home, and maybe a squeeze of lemon juice. But yeah, it's just two ingredients to make the sauce. This is so good. <laughs> I have to do my own horn or anything, but <laughs> really, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, if you plan to try out this recipe, let us know in the comments. Who, who, who wants to try this recipe at home? <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
Yeah. And just, you know, that I don't really know how to cook very well. And I think I made the comment to Jess a few weeks ago when I saw the sauce, I was like, I think I could try that. It's only a couple of steps yeah. and it's so good. Yeah. yeah. It's simple. It's like what, like six ingredients. Mm -hmm. It's not much yeah. at all. Yeah. Yeah. And we've also tried a version of this using the uh, Boca new turkey burger. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Mm -hmm. So you can swap out the burger for whatever burger you have around. But yeah. I think the balance of flavors is really, really nice. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks for sampling yeah. my food, yeah. everybody. Thanks, thanks for making it. <laughs> awesome. All right. Once again, for this and other simple vegan recipes, visit tryveg.com. And if you're in the D.C. area and you don't feel like cooking, Go to VegDC.com to look at our vegan and veg-friendly DC guide for ideas of where to eat. Um, this evening, I'm thinking about eating at Bus Boys and getting some of that delicious vegan mac and cheese. Um, I'm also thinking about going to Loving Hut in Arlington. Um, and New Vegan has amazing sweet potatoes, and I love their garlicky kale salad and their sweet kale salad. So those are just three places that I'm kind of thinking about going to eat after this broadcast ends. Let me know where you want to eat in DC. Peace, everybody. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are we back? Yeah, go ahead. All right. So thank you, Jessica, for that amazing cooking demo. And one of the things that I just want to say, working with Jessica, which is incredibly fun, is that she tests out all her recipes in our office. So we are constantly taste testing, and it is a huge advantage for us. And I also just want to give a shout out. She mentioned some of the vendors at the DC Veg Fest, like Follow Your Heart is one of the companies we work with. And this is a, the program that we were going to be distributing at the Veg Fest. Um, but I just wanted to, to point out all of the different exhibitors and vendors who are going to be there. You can go to our website, dcvegfest.com, and look up the list of exhibitors. And we include a link to all of them if they're online in some capacity of a website or a Facebook page. You can link to them and find out who they are. I mean, we've got so many great companies like Bake Shop, DC, and Moms, um, Mango Grove, Pow Pow, Refocus Vegan, um, Vegan Treats, uh, Zoe's Vegan Delight, Blue Ridge um, Buka, Bob's Red Mill, Compassion Co., Cow Hugger, and the list just goes on. We've got restaurant and food vendors. We've got commercial vendors. And we also have a slew of nonprofit organizations who are going to be there. We're going to continue to promote these companies and nonprofits so you know who they are. And uh, we're so grateful again for all of their support. And um, dcvegfest.com again, that has the link to all of them. So please check all of them out. Please show your love and support for them because they were all ready to come out. And unfortunately, they couldn't be on site. And of course, one of those vendors and supporters is the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, as well as the Barnard Medical Center. So we are now ready to bring on our final guest for today before we do a closeout, um, and that is Dr. Neil Bernard. And as I was mentioning a little bit earlier, if you were on, this is one of his books, Reversing Diabetes. He is the founder and the president of Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. They are based in the D.C. area, but they work nationally. And they also um, have the Barnard Medical Center, which is also based in the Washington, D.C. area. 
And Neil is going to be one of our special guests on the main stage at the DC Veg Fest, and he has been there in the past. He's a phenomenal speaker, and he has so much really important information to share. So we're really thrilled that he was able to join us um, remotely to our virtual Veg Fest. So Neil, thank you so much for being here, and we're excited to hear from you. Hi there, Erica. Thanks for letting me join you today. Um, and the Barnard Medical Center and the Physicians Committee were delighted to be able to be sponsors. And um, maybe just a quick shout out about a couple of things, if you don't mind. Um, for all of those folks who are saying, my doctor just doesn't understand my diet. Um, or I want to find a doctor who really kind of has a clue about how to practice medicine the right way. Um, it's for you that we set up the Barnard Medical Center. Uh, we're on Wisconsin Avenue. We take all common insurances, or if you don't have insurance, you can still come. Um, and I hope people will join us. Uh, if you have either a minor me medical problem or a major medical problem, whether it's a sprained ankle or a urinary tract infection or heart disease or things like that, please come and see us. We provide comprehensive um, primary care, but we also have dietitians who are on staff and classes to handle all of your nutrition questions too. Um, so we would love to have you come up and see us. Uh, we're at the Barnard Medical Center. And let me give you the phone number if you'd like to call and, and ask a question. It's 202-527-7500. That's 202-527-7500. Also, let me mention, we are sponsoring a film series at the Bethesda Row Cinema. Do you know where that is? It's up in right in the heart of Bethesda. And it's Tuesdays at seven o'clock. We just had the first one last week. It was lots of fun. And next week, uh, that's the 18th, September 18th, seven o'clock at Bethesda Row, Austin Aries is going to come. And he's going to talk about how to do a vegan diet when you are one of the biggest pro wrestlers in the world. And that's going to be lots of fun, along with weight loss champion Chuck Carroll. September 25th, uh, we are going to be showing what the health. This is a perfect time to drag all of your friends to see this life-changing movie. Again, that's September 25th, seven o'clock. And then October 2nd, also at seven o'clock, have you seen the movie Crazy Sexy Cancer? It is the most heartwarming story about, and frankly concerning story, um, it's Chris Carr's experience. As, as If you know Chris's story, she was diagnosed with a, a very problematic cancer years ago, but she fought back. And you may have seen her on Oprah or on other programs, and we are gonna be showing Crazy Sexy Cancer. This is the movie of, of her experience. So um, these are Tuesdays. 7 p.m., Bethesda Row Cinema. Uh, please join us. Can't wait to see you there. Okay, if I have a couple of minutes left, let me talk about what I was planning to talk about on the main stage at VegFest. Um, and that is the one issue that so many people get stuck on. So many people who want to go to a plant-based diet, a vegan diet, think the one thing I'm stuck with is I can't give up cheese. That's the cheese trap. And having looked at this, we found three things. Cheese is fattening, it has health, it causes health problems, and third, it can be addicting. And I can see you nodding your head, you know exactly what I mean. And I'm sure you're glad that you've broken away from it if you have, but if you haven't, um, I have a book called The Cheese Trap that, that goes into these in some detail. Two quick things I just wanna tell you. Um, Cheese comes from milk, milk comes from cows. Cows don't give any milk though, until they are pregnant and give birth. And cows on dairy farms are impregnated every year. And they're pregnant for about nine months, similar in, in duration to a human pregnancy. And so if they're pregnant nine months out of every 12, what that means is you're milking pregnant cows. Pregnant cows put estrogens, female sex hormones, into their milk, it's concentrated in the cheese, and you know where this is going. Uh, we have concerns about fertility problems, hormone-related cancers, and other issues that come from consuming dairy products, especially cheese, because there are traces of female hormones there. Um, Catherine Lawrence is an amazing uh, case in point. She was an aerospace engineer uh, in the Air Force, one of the first people to go into Iraq back in 2003. Um, when she came back, she was tucking into cheese and all the foods that she really missed when she was overseas. And she ended up having a hormone related problem. It's endometriosis, a painful condition that often leads to infertility. Um, she changed her diet, luckily, adopted a completely vegan 
low fat, healthy diet and her endometriosis, unlike just about every other case I've ever heard of, was cured, went away. And the hysterectomy that her doctor had recommended for her was never needed. She has three kids today. Um, the point I'm making is that pregnant cows make estrogens that get into milk that are concentrated in cheese, and this can affect all kinds of things. Now, endometriosis is typically not life-threatening. Breast cancer is. Uh, researchers in California showed that women who consume the most cheese or butter or other high-fat dairy products, women who have previously been diagnosed with breast cancer and consume these foods, have a 49% higher risk of dying of their cancer compared to the women who generally avoid cheese and other fatty dairy products. Again, the hormone issues are important. Um, did I say it was addicting? When a person digests milk, the dairy protein, casein, breaks apart to release casomorphins. These are casein-derived morphine-like compounds. They get into the bloodstream, they, they come out of the dairy protein, they get into the bloodstream, they attach to the very same receptors in the brain that morphine or heroin would attach to. They're not that strong. The strongest one has about one-tenth the brain binding power of pure pharmacy-grade morphine. So it's not enough to get you arrested, but it's more than enough to get you hooked on cheese. And the problem is that cheese is 70% fat, 7-0, 70% fat, high in cholesterol. If it were any worse, it would be Vaseline. It's one of the highest salt foods there are, that there are. Your average American eats 60,000 calories worth of cheese every single year. It's the reason kids are heavy. It's the reason that many adults have trouble uh, losing weight. So my book is called The Cheese Trap. Have a look at it if you'd like to pick it up at your local library. I hope that it will uh, provide information that you find of interest. So let me just recap. If you have a loved one who you think might need some help, who might want to uh, perhaps learn about what vegan eating can be and learn how healthy they can be, please join us at Bethesda Row. We're having sessions on September 18th and 25th and October 2nd, seven o'clock. Uh, we have movies and we're gonna have uh, discussions. I'm gonna be there and I hope that you'll join me. And if you'd like to join us at the Barnard Medical Center, if you'd like to see one of our physicians or nurse practitioners, or dietitians for a medical problem or a nutritional problem, whatever that might be. We take insurances. We also take no insurance if you, if you don't have it. We'd love to see you. The number there is 202-527-7500. So finally, I just want to say a huge salute to Erica. I want to say a huge salute to Robin and everybody who has worked so hard to plan this event. Sometimes nature conspires against us, but it's been wonderful to be able to share a few thoughts with you. Um, and I look forward to seeing you at another event before too long. Hey, Thanks very much. All right, so thank you for back on. Before you start talking, or are you going to come? All right, you're on. All right. Thank you, Neil, for that wonderful talk about plant-based health. And that, that wraps up. Yes, the I have first a, ever like veg fest. It's the real. Yeah, we're, we want everyone to come on up who was part of the veg fest today. Come on up. Come on, come on. Yep, Everybody. come on up. <laughs> Come on, yay, woo! This was a team effort. Um, and we have a lot of remote folks who've yes. been part of this event today. So we yes. want to thank everyone who was able to chime in remotely. Mm -hmm. um, Ginny and Carol and Eric and Mike and Neil, who was just on. And Elizabeth. And the great cooking demo from Elizabeth. Yeah. And then we had all this in-studio stuff. And we've got Karina. And now you can actually see who Karina is. <laughs> and we just got joined by a chicken. <laughs> so yeah, we are, we're just really thrilled that everyone could be here. And we wanted just a couple of points we want to remind everyone. First, I want to say visit our website, gcvegfest.com. Please check out all of the different vendors who are going to be here today to support them and show your love. Let them yeah. know that we sent you there. And some of them are online stores, so please just visit them and thank them for all their support. And we have all of our sponsors who are listed in uh, on the website as well. Yeah. And we have this fry air fryer. Yes, yes. We will be announcing the winner of this air fryer next week. So stay tuned to TriVeg. Oops, not TriVeg. DCVegFest.com. 
And um, yeah, you will have details. We'll be announcing our winner. So thank you so much to everyone who has commented. I'm overwhelmed by how many comments and people have viewed. Like we were hoping this would be a great way for people to engage not only locally, but everywhere. And you guys really showed up and were really supportive. So we just thank you for watching. Because yeah. yeah. it would have been a bummer if it was just yeah. us and nobody was watching. <laughs> <laughs> I think we still would have had some fun. While oh, we there, there was a lot of good food here. <laughs> and you know, we, we were able to make lemonade yes, basically absolutely. out of this situation. And um, Again, and a lot of you are asking about the tote bag. So, um, Stuart, can you remind everyone how to get their tote bag? Yes. Follow us everywhere Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at DC Veg Fest. And we'll be posting where the tote bags are going to be all week at random times. So, just make sure you're checking in. When we announce it, head to that location and grab your tote bag. Yeah. Woo! That's it. Woo, so thank, thank you. All. you. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 <laughs> All right. Any more dancing?